What's up, Six Row Podcast fans? Here we are, back at it again. Let's get into these ads and get right into the episode. Guys, first up, we got Eric at RCG Mortgage. If you're a first-time home buyer or you've been thinking about refinancing, shoot Eric a call or text at 631-774-1783. He gets pre-qualified, answer any questions you have about anything going on. Again, you can contact him. Contact him at 631-774-1783. And if you're interested in buying a new house or you're refinancing your house or uh, you know doing some work on your house and you need a land surveyor, hit our boys up at Municipal Land Survey, 631-345-2658. Again, that's 631-345-2658, Municipal Land Survey handling all your land surveying needs in this great state of New York. Last but not least, we got AS Engineering Services. You could reach them at 631-560-0259 or on the interconnected webs at www.asengineeringservices.com. Guys, they are a full-scale architectural and engineering firm. They will handle everything that you guys need from start to finish, new builds, remodels, commercial, residential, whatever you guys want, they can do it. Guys, this episode we have Nick and Pat, the writer and writers and director of Into the Valley, a uh, film that these guys developed and uh, made. It's a feature-length film, very entertaining movie. Uh, we give them a chance to talk about the process of writing the movie, uh, directing it, producing it. Um, the creative process that goes behind it, and then uh, really we get into the production of the movie. Um, very entertaining stuff, uh, very funny guys, and uh, we had a great time with them. Hope you enjoyed as much as we did. All right, guys, we're live. Let's get into it. Six cool. Borough Podcast, D-Rock. Yarbs. Our guests. Uh, my name's Nick Buscarino. Pat Bradley. You guys uh, are here to discuss the film you just made, Into yes. the Valley, yeah. which I watched last night. And I watched today. So before before we get into it, first, I want to tell you guys, I was fucking impressed. Honestly. Thank you, Thank you. I was skeptical at first because I've had some acquaintances i should say who've uh done some similar things and uh yours was good way way better than a lot of the other yeah like stuff that you'd get from people that you know that are like oh yeah i made this film check it out and you're like oh cringing that just, oh, just watching it yeah <laughs> yeah it's kind of the equivalent of uh oh check out my mixtape <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, exactly it, it, it's, it's the perfect <laughs> metaphor yeah. it's yeah. my family did that to me they're like, oh, I didn't think it was going to be like, you made an actual film. Yeah. Like, no shit. What do you, you know. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. But it, a you film. know. Oh, you made a film. Yeah. You know. Toronto, yeah. <laughs> so, how did, I, the background, the way we got you guys on, obviously, I know Nick, we worked together. So, how did you guys link up? Uh, we used to work together. Yeah, we used to work together. Okay. So, so I came out of uh, my first college for I was doing script writing there, and I came home because I wasn't really too sure what was going on. So I went to go work with my uncle. My uncle works with Pat, and that's where we met. Okay. So where'd you go to school? I first went to school, uh, Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts, and I was studying screenwriting. Okay. He's fancy. A friend of mine went to the new school. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the, the for, good school. Uh, is that that's uh, yeah? Oh, okay. <laughs> Mine was like the like the poor school. There's a, uh, a college in the <laughs> town over called the Williamstown College. It was like the private 50, 50k a year school. Mine was like the uh, in-state 4k a year tuition. Like, okay. come on by, we'll hook you up. I was like, all right, cool. All right. <laughs> Nine ninety nine for the Wi-Fi. Test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the, Hamptons, the Hamptons in the Hamptons in of writing schools. Okay. You know what I've noticed about the difference between those schools? They're still they're teaching the same material. Because yeah. the material doesn't matter. It's it's the quality of people that are usually teaching you that yeah. that you re- that's what you're paying for. Because the yeah. the information is the information. It, like it is what it is, and you could you get it without even going to school. Like now, you know, on the internet, you can yes. Google everything. You can find a YouTube video on almost anything. So it's really the difference between those schools, like those high price schools, and like the not so high price yeah. schools. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the quali- Yeah, the quality of the people. Message, yep. Yeah, like it's how much you want to kind of learn. Also, yeah, what your audience is. 
So yeah. what um what led to this? Like how you guys work together and just found out you had a mutual interest in films and decided to, to do it that way? Like give me give me the background. Yeah, you can pretty much off. it was uh I think his uncle might have uh, kind of laid the forefront because I was always kind of shy about my writing. Like I never showed anyone anything I ever wrote. Like, like every writer that's ever existed. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I was like super, super self conscious <laughs> about it. Like only people that ever seen anything was like my writing, like mentors and like my professors. And even then, I was like, my friends were like, "Oh, like you go to school for writing? Like let me see something." Like, nah. Like I'm like, okay. <laughs> no, no. But like it's it's, it's a really like self conscious <laughs> thing. My uncle kind of laid out the pad. He was like, "Yo, Nikki writes. You know, Pat writes." Because Pat, you no, know, I was interested in it. And my uncle kind of laid the forefront. It was just like you know, show you know, facilitating but, the the yeah. The, it's like the show me purchase. your like show me mine. I'll show you yours. Kind of <laughs> he, he doesn't want anybody to hear the hot fire mixtape. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then uh, I kind of Pat was telling me things he was working on. I was like really interested. And then like I kind of like kind of opened up a little bit. I like, showed him like a kind of thing. And like he kind of like kind of gave me like a like not it was it was he said it was good. So I was kind of like kind of not inspired, but I was just like kind of like all right, cool. Like let me continue this path. Well, it's like, it's it a good sense. thing to get. Some positive sure. feedback. Yeah, I read, positive, yeah, exactly. I read this book, one of my favorite books ever, um, by Stephen Pressfield called The War of Art. And he, you know, obviously he's a writer, so you could gear this book towards anything um, message wise, but he was specifically speaking about writing. And he said, um, and I'm probably going to butcher the quote, but it basically was like, um, pe- the, the, the people who have the utmost confidence are usually frauds, and people who are nervous or more than likely the real thing. And so the, the next thing he says, like, if you think you're a writer and you are worried and you ask your friends, am I a writer? You probably are. I got to get that actual quote because I butchered it. <laughs> it'll, it'll make more sense because I butchered the fucking quote. I guess I'm not a writer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a poet. Didn't even I, I really don't give a shit what people... Yeah, know, well, obviously it's art, you know, so you're creating your own art for yourself you yeah, know? Definitely. and hoping people that enjoy it if not then you know yeah definitely but when you're younger though and you're definitely in a, like a in a setting where like acceptance and you just want you just want you know positive feedback is definitely helpful for a younger person I'm talking about when I was like 18 to 20 so I'm not like really millennial now I'm just like I'm gonna <laughs> fuck like I don't really alright here's the quote not butchered if you find yourself asking yourself and your friends am I really a writer am I really an artist chances are you are the counterfeit innovator is wildly self-confident. The real one is scared to death. Except for you. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Pat. Could be trash. I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> nobody tells me. You know, either constructive criticism. Nobody ever giving you constructive criticism. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, it was good. Good. That's like, the uh, fucking worst. Everybody yeah. that saw the movie. Oh, it was a great movie. I know it's not great. You yeah, know, I know it's decent. Be better. You know, it's a decent movie. I know it's not great. Don't tell me it's the best movie ever. And, yeah, you yeah. Know, it, Tell me, like, you know, tell me what you didn't like. Yeah. What I, like, what I, what I did, like, no. the fourth thing, I was like, yo, give me a compliment sandwich. Give me something you like. Tell me something that could be better. And tell me something that could be, you know, that's why I say it to people. Yeah. So before we get into that, because I'm going to give it to you. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I don't want to spoil it, alert it, but um, give, give the background, give the premise about it, um, the synopsis, if you will, and then, then I need to hear the idea behind like where the idea where came, came from, from? Right. and then i'll tell you all right so That's i'll tell better, you the yeah. synopsis yeah, you he'll tell you since it's his idea uh synopsis is basically there's a guy named chris put, just put that thing right up yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> oh right by the mouth yeah, yeah baby get, get, don't forget to cut the balls hold on, hold on. i don't want to you know make noise <laughs> quiet uh basically there's a guy named chris and you know he's married has kids banging a hooker on the side and uh live the american dream exactly Except Queen he's Street. a karaoke singer. Uh, he's, you know, he's obsessed with Frankie Valli. Except he's a really shitty singer. So he's, basically, he's going through life trying to emulate Frankie Valli's life, thinking that it would get him to the level where Frankie Valli is, not knowing that Frankie Valli has talent and he doesn't. Right. So he thinks that if he's just sets his life up the way that Frankie Valli did, you know, with uh, getting divorced and, you know, every single piece of Frankie Valley's life he tries to mm-hmm. emulate himself, that he would get there. And you saw it, you know, he doesn't. So it's uh, a little weird, you know, trying to copy somebody's life, you know. But, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that a little metaphor for you and your writing? <laughs> Not <laughs> really. <laughs> sure. All right, so where 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 did you get the idea from? Uh, original idea, I actually still have it in my phone, was uh, – 
it, you, know, you, you saw the movie. So right after the uh, the title cards into the valley, the guys going banging the hook. Banging and the hook. like, you know, call me Frankie, call me Frankie. And the whole movie is based off of that one scene where this dude cannot get off until this hooker calls him Frankie. That's the whole premise of the movie. And then it's just like, literally, why? Yeah, so where the hell did that come from for you? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. That, that just kind of flew out. But that was like, that's, <laughs> that, that's like the original. I was like, all right, why can't, like, What why? do you make the hookers call you? Frankie. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, of course. Like, what was it? Art imitates life or life imitates <laughs> life, art? Life imitates yeah. art. Yeah. But uh, it's just like, essentially, started doing that. And like, I had like a, actually found like a couple weeks ago, like a whole like eight page like spec script. It's trash. But it's just like, I kind of just written down like, why, why, why can't he get off? Why is Frankie so important? Who is Frankie? What is Frankie to this guy? And uh, that's where it just kind of flew from. So he, Frankie to him was just kind of this like this unobtainable figure that he's trying to be. It's something that's better than him. So right. that's what gets him off. It's just why Frankie to... Valley? I don't know. Okay. It just makes good music. Kind of the... I like his music. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Yeah, I mean, you know, pretty Appar- crazy fucking life. <laughs> pretty crazy life. Apparently, yeah, I've, yeah. I've ruined Frankie Valley music for multiple people. Like, I'll get I'll get texts like, "Yo, Frankie Valley just came on." Like. And all I'm thinking about is this X scene. I'm like, yeah. Well, that's good, actually. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That means you made, you, you hit a mark. It might not have been the mark you were looking for, but you still hit one. Any mark is. Yeah. Well, no, that's, mark is, yeah. yeah. So. Have, uh, this one guy after the film, he uh, he sent me a text. Uh, I might still have it. But he was like, uh, you know, I'm a karaoke singer. You know, I'm, I'm, I take karaoke real seriously. I was like, no, really? <laughs> I immediately don't take you serious. <laughs> he's like, okay. <laughs> he's like, I got trophies. He's like, so it really hit home. Like, That's right. a real thing? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. People get into karaoke. Like, like they give out trophies for yeah, that? I did not sure, know yeah. that was a real he thing. He was ready to show me video. I was like, I don't want to see the video. Just He's like, yeah, you know, I was on, you know, we were driving home, and I'm telling my wife, like, maybe you should call me Frank. Maybe. <laughs> I was like, all right, if we're going into role play, we could do something better than, you yeah, know, something wow. better than that. <laughs> wow. But it, you know, That's touch nice somebody love. in a different way. Uh, I mean... You touch people's lives, though. That's yeah, you know, yeah. That's what it's about. As long as they're touching each other, <laughs> it's all right. That that text you sent me the day after, like like someone left it, like a newspaper clipping on your <sighs> desk. It's like I, I didn't know this was a family film, like unless your family's a fucking bunch of psychopaths. <laughs> they just left it on my desk at work. I was like, oh, all right, it is a family film. Yeah, you know, has the a best fam- part was uh, the little kid Chris and his mom. I originally sent her the script because we were casting kid actors. I was like, this is gonna be really bad because when you like hire an actor, you, you send them them, you send them their sides, and then you send them the script as a whole so they can kind of gauge it. So I had to send this kid's mom the script. The kid's like seven, and this is the banging, the fucking banging lines, the banging hookers. The kids are getting whatever, and like uh, she's like, "Is this a true story?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> it's, it was, and then when the premiere came, she was like, "I remember the script, and there's a lot of terrible things in it. Can you tell me like the timestamps where like I should leave the theater?" I'm like, "You should only be in the theater for about three minutes the <laughs> entire time." <laughs> <laughs> only bring Chris. Only bring the little kid in when he's on the screen. You do not want them to right. be involved. And you, like, you know what? We'll actually just send you your, your part. <laughs> you can watch it at home. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Not the whole movie. When we were casting, uh, I got so many emails from parents like after their kids audition, and when we sent out just the sides of the final scene, one of the final scenes, the dawn scene, the dawn scene really. Is when, I saved the, the emails. Door. I must have yeah. got like ten emails. Like this, uh, my kid can't stop crying after reading it. <laughs> I was yeah. like, Jesus Christ, you know, lady, I'm sorry. You know, what do you, you know, I told you it was dark before I sent it to you. Right. You know, I well, told you you to read it before. Yeah, you, yeah like, you know, and you, you judge just skimming through this if you want to get it to your kid. Yeah. And then one of them was like, uh, you know, her father just died and, you know, it's really going to hit her. I don't know if she could do it. I was like, then don't do it. Yeah, then don't. You know, like, don't, please not... don't. Like, I, I don't want, you know, this kid just breaking down in the middle of uh, the audition. Well, maybe the audition. you do. Maybe, maybe you want to break it down. Not the audition. <laughs> Sure, Maybe in the, save you know, for the screen. Save as the long screen. as the camera's running, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> but yeah. where the uh, the did you set out to make a dark movie or just kind of? Yeah, I've always liked dark movies because I feel like Happy Endings like it's it's like a nineteen eighties thing. Like at the end of the movie, the guys like sitting there with the boombox with the fist in the air. Like it's not life. It's not right. that shit ain't real. It doesn't happen. So, like, who the hell wants to go see that? I guess people do want to see that because they want to escape for that. But I don't. I'm not gonna make that. I agree with you hundred percent. And this is real out there. I know you'll know what I'm talking about. There was a movie in the early 90s, um, and well, of course now I can't remember the name, but it was the kid inherits the Minnesota Twins, the baseball team. Oh, it was it Rookie of the Year? No, it's, no, no. it's uh, Little Big League. Little Big League, Little Big League. that's there it. Uh, and the movie ends... Nolan Gardner, right? No, that's no, no, Rookie no, of the Year. Rookie yeah. Year. Is it, uh, same, same time period. Yeah, same time period. Probably maybe years. a year or two apart. But uh, the movie ends, 
you know, uh, Minnesota starts making this great comeback, and it looks like they even go to the World Series, maybe win the pendant. And in the like very final scene, the dude hits what looks like the game-winning home run, and he just flies out to center field, and that was it. And yeah. it's like, you know, that's more likely. It wasn't like you know, Angels in the outfield, the Rookie of the Year, they win the pendant and shit. It was like. I'm like, oh, I like this movie just for that. Yeah, because like, like the good guys don't always win. That's the rule. Right, no, yeah, you know, the rule right. is the good guys don't win. Yeah. And the exception is I hate the that. Title. Especially right. if you know in a movie, there's only one or a movie like that that has like a, a good guy, bad guy kind of thing. There's only two ways it can end, and that's the worst because not the worst, but like you you really can sit in there like I don't want the good guy to win because it never it's not happens. realistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not realistic. Yeah. But. Um, there was no real good guy in this, though. Yeah. Like, there was no, you know. But I like that because it that's, in my opinion, one of the, what was one of the pros to me is that it wasn't your typical, like, archetypes and storylines like that. It was just more, like, honestly, that was a, a movie that I could see being a real-life premise in one way or another. Maybe not necessarily Frankie Valli, but, like, there's a lot of grown-ass men out there with daddy issues who are probably doing things, you know, trying to get their father's love. You sure. know, like, t- I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is what it is. I mean, maybe not to that extreme, but for sure, you know, like, I grew up watching fights with my dad, and that's how I got into fights. And, like, me and my dad don't have a good relationship, and if I really think about it, it's probably why I fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I can see that being a real thing. Yeah. You know, obviously take it to a little bit of an extreme, but I like that because it was just a real-life premise. It didn't have this unbelievable... um Story arc, I could see that being somebody's real life paralleling it. That's also a thing that nobody really touches on. You know, everybody assumes you got mommy issues. You got right. this. You know, nobody really gives a shit about that. Right. Yeah. But you know, obviously, as a kid, you know, your idol is your father. Right. Mo- you know, if you grew up with a yeah with a father, even if you even if you grew up with him for a small period of time, yeah. that's yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. But that's something that's not really touched. I mean, we didn't really die like. There was a lot more to the script that we didn't actually have time to film. We ran yeah. out of money. But uh, there was a lot more that dove into, on my end, like we wrote two different scripts. Yeah. And we, uh, you know, obviously working with somebody else is harder, you know, story-wise. So he wanted it one way, I wanted it another way. And we kind of killed both, but combined them at the same time. Yeah, kind of yeah. took the best of both and kind of, kind of like a deck of cards, kind of shuffle them, just kind of try to merge them the best we can. Because it was two good scripts, but I definitely are... Version of the character, We're, definitely, definitely two different versions. Yeah. It was like 180. His was this way, mine was facing this way. Okay. Two, oh shit. <laughs> two different, uh. So mine was more into the, uh, the, his mind, like the depth and, like I had a whole scene, another 20 minutes where he, uh, goes with his mother. His mother's in a psych ward. And he's, instead of everything that was, we combined to confess, like, uh, with the two girls in the diner, the hooker and the wife, and, other scenes where he's confessing, like the father and the hooker. Yeah. That was all him confessing to his mother in my, in oh, my okay. style. Okay. So, so mom, that was like uh, the one scene with his mom where he's singing to his mom? Yeah. Is that like a shortened, more condensed? More condensed, okay. younger flashback. Whereas right. this was, he was older. He was a man and he was going to see his mom. Oh, okay. Who was still in a psych ward older. Okay. Which was, uh, I was trying to get my mom to play it, but uh, <laughs> my mom actually passed away in October. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So thank you. But, uh, you know. That didn't happen. Right. We didn't. We wouldn't have had time anyway because <clears throat> we actually were on our. Uh, we had a cinematographer, you know, and his oh, whole yeah. crew lined up. Three weeks before we're ready to shoot, he on called the, on the contract. Like, on the contract, money's everything. like money's exchanged, like permits, insurance, like things are like steamrolling to December second. We started filming December second, twenty sixteen. And um, he calls me up middle of the day. He's like, uh, I got to talk to you. I was like, all right, you called me, talk to me. So he's like, uh, you know, I got this job in Ecuador or Argentina or somewhere, wherever it was. He's like, but the thing is, it starts um, December 5th. He's like, I won't be back until, I was like, yeah, but you're under contract. He's like, yeah, but you know, this is a great opportunity for me. I was like, all right, so my story's shit, and whatever commercial you're going to go shoot in Argentina is a, you know, great opportunity. Okay. You know, so then he's like, but I could recommend, you know. So at this point, I want to reach through the phone and jump the shit out of him. <laughs> You're like, you better recommend a good fucking lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, we already put the money up. You know, the, yeah, we, had, we have to get it done. We, yeah. had a, we had a bunch of money in pre-production already. We already had people on the contract for acting and lo- locations and all that. And then I actually drafted the email being like, like I was going to send everyone and be like, that's it. We're pulling the plug. I actually drafted that email. And I was like, I, 
let's put a hold and see if we can figure something out. So we actually got the recommendation to our cinematographer, Chris Lind, who was amazing. And he had a whole crew set up. So we actually went we went to pre-production with him, what, two weeks before we started filming? Two weeks before. I met with him one time. And yeah. we, we didn't have a lookbook. We didn't have anything set. Everything what's, was set. What's with, a lookbook? Kind of like, like a, how you want the film to look. So you got uh, like sh- color like storyboard wheels. Storyboard or something? Yeah, like a storyboard, oh, yeah. but like color wheels. Like you want the background. You know, this scene you want lit a certain way. Okay. You know, something like that. Like a, like a guidebook to how you're physically going <laughs> to shoot the film within like, uh, how's it going to look like on scene screen. Scene, you know. So it's, it's like blueprints. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it didn't have that that we had from the original from the original DP. So we didn't have the editor from him. We didn't have the lighting Jesus. guy, the crew, nothing. Nothing. We had to start from scratch two weeks before we started filming. So the guy, uh, you know, I met with Chris and we were just talking and like I wasn't 100% sure. And then, you know, we started digging into, you know, the story more. And what he was telling me that he wanted to do made a whole lot more sense than what the other guy was telling me he wanted to do. So he was more invested probably, too. Like, he was... He didn't... He read the script, like, that morning on the way in. Like, oh, he didn't wow. even... So he's like, you know, I, I was reading it, and he's like, you know, I, I, I want to go this way with it. And the other guy wanted to go this way with it. Yeah, so got- the other guy kind of was like, you know, in nine days, uh, eight days, this is what we can film, which made us cut... Half. Some, half, some really important scenes that we really, I know the movie felt a little fast to you, right? Like it was pretty much, um, after the flashbacks, it was like a sprint. I, I mean, I guess it covered, a, I never, I didn't think about it really until you said it. It does cover a lot of ground from there on. Um, like the first 20 minutes after, mm-hmm. like you get, get the premise, I guess it does cover a lot and of ground pretty like quickly. Right in. Yeah. So we cut out all the... Uh, all the, not the fluff, but um, all the, uh, fluff, yeah. like all, the all the pleasantries. Yeah, if you yeah, want to, yeah. for, you know, fluff, basically. Right, right. So that'll kind of advance the story a little slower, mm-hmm. you know, trying to maybe give a little more to certain characters. Yeah, a little more depth, a little yeah. more background yeah. to certain We completely had to cut it. Right. So there was, you know, it was, if we were able to, we could have filmed much more with this crew that we had than what this guy actually projected. Yes. So, they were instant. Like, you know, everything was set up fast. Boom, shot done. after shot after shot. They were like, all right, like super swing the sticks. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> where'd the camera go? There was days where we, um, like, you know, we set uh, time frames. So, like, you know, we did the bar scene, and we were only allowed to shoot a certain time. So in the morning we went there, we shot a scene with nobody in the bar. Mm-hmm. And then we were like, all right, while we're here, you know, we have six hours to wait. So let's film this scene here, this scene here. But then if we would have, you know, ske- like the way we scheduled it was if we would have had this crew from the beginning, they would have been like, okay, we could do this, this, and this also. Yeah. So we could have banged out way more because we did a lot of time just sitting around waiting. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the, the two schedules kind of got intertwined. But uh, the first the first guy was like, there's no way we can shoot this in, what do you have, nine days? Nine days. To shoot a feature film and not, to shoot 70 pages in nine days, it's kind of unheard of. Like a, a real Hollywood movie shoots a feature film in about... 90 to 120 days. So we're trying to film this in nine days. So Jeez. the first guy was like, there's no way we can film this in nine days. You could probably film about 10 pages. You could probably do... Why, don't, why only nine days, though? That's, that's what we had. That's, that's all we had. Okay. Okay. So okay. what happened was I had to leave that job because I mean, we couldn't take off at the same time. We had the same job. So I couldn't take off. We couldn't take off at the same time. So I had to quit that job, and he took vacation so we could have those nine days to film. That was right before I took that internship. In Seaford. Oh, wow. That was December. So December 1, I had no job. I'm spending all this money having a film. I got nothing. And then so we're filming this, and I'm like, the only, only way we could do it was if I is, is if I'd left, was if I quit my job. The only way we could have filmed because we couldn't take off at the same time. Good for you, man. Yeah, shit. So I was that's like, going after what you want, man. That's awesome. So that, that kind of – So he had, he had nine days vacation left, and our old company was really, really strict. Like you can't you, – well, you guys, what you get. Like we're not, we're not fronting you any days. Like, you're not like working. No, it's like – I told my told my boss like, yo, let me take these nine days off. I'll work for free for a week. He's like, no. I'm like, I'm quitting then. I gave him a month's notice. I'm like, I'm doing this. Like, I'm. It's going Good down. for you, man. So we had That's nine awesome. days vacation yeah. left, and we're like, all right, we got nine days to make this. Like, let's do it. We got no choice. You know, it's got to yeah. be done in nine days. So that leads me to my next question because obviously this is like you quit your job to do this, which is a pretty big risk. Um, first movie, right? This is the first movie you guys have made. First full length. Full length. Okay. We did it like a couple little just really short, shitty. short shit. <laughs> short. <laughs> so what's mixtapes? Yeah. <laughs> Not even. EPs. <laughs> Bad EPs. Just a SoundCloud song. That's yeah. It. SoundCloud rappers. So Sound what's, what's the um, 
what's the ultimate goal here, right? I mean, because um, in, in the way I think, uh, from the outside looking in, I would assume, obviously, if you're quitting your job and you're doing this, it's a passion of yours. You'd like to make more movies and have this be your career to a certain degree. So I was almost thinking in my mind, you're building like a resume, right? So even it's, if this doesn't... It's kind of like a the most expensive portfolio piece you'll ever make. <laughs> right, right. It's so a giant the, portfolio piece. Is that the yeah. end goal here? Like to maybe get this recognized, get something off it, and then keep building on it? Yeah, it's kind of like someone that's bigger than you and say, all right, cool, we like what you did with X, you know, here's Y, see what we can do with that. Or like, you know, bring it on to, an, like, to a, a project that's already under pre-production and say, like, let's, let's bring them on, let's see what, we, let's see what you can do. Okay. Kind of stuff like that. And so then, your goal is to be a producer, director, or screenwriter? Kind just, of I, like, I like to write. I like to, I kind of do like the producing stuff, I kind of like the back scenes of like getting, getting the ball in motion, making contacts, and kind of just setting things up. Like, I like, really like the location scouting kind of aspect of it because there's like where you see like where it's kind of going to come to life. Okay. But uh, it's definitely, yeah. What about you? I'm just a writer. I have, it. I'm an asshole, so I can't deal with people. <laughs> yeah, that was, that so, was the worst part, um, just dealing with, no. To, I'm not very nice. You know, I'll put it that way. Like, you know, cool, but, you know, you piss me off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what it is. Right. Yeah, don't got time I don't to think waste. that makes you an asshole. Oh, and, uh, to certain people, it yeah, does. So, well, you know. Uh, not to us. Yeah, yeah. not to us. <laughs> That, like you're, holding, you're my kind of a person is yeah. what you Holding want. my tongue to these people that are like, you know, just... Giving you lip over... For like, just the stupidest possible, right. you know. No, I understand that. And just holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it. Because what are you going to do? You, you're going like, to let them walk? Right. And you have to this whole you're thing... You're going to screw yourself over yeah. completely. Yeah, so it's, that. you know, I don't want to mention any names, but I had one person on the film that really just pushed every single button. Just yeah. at any time they got a chance to do it, they were just... And they knew. They did. They knew. They were it's like the worst kind of person. It's a, they were like, "It's a game to them because like, what are they gonna do? They're gonna fl- they're gonna yell at me. They're gonna flip me off. Like, I'm I'm all you got. Right. Only game in town right now. Yeah. So it was. Uh, so you kidnapped that person right after rap. That's what you I did. don't know what happened to them. <laughs> yeah. They they missed well, the premiere. Yeah. Yeah. No they knows what yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened. It's a shame. But so, uh, yeah, my goal would just to be writing. Uh, I've actually uh, recently just sold something off of that. Oh, nice. Anything uh, you could talk about? Or? No, no, yeah, not yet. Okay. But uh, I've been writing since, you know, I was a kid. But I've been selling work, and I used to write music, uh, music videos for, you know, people. Awesome. And uh, I had an agent, and don't have an agent anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted me to do something, to uh, write something for a comic book company. And I did, and it was pretty much a big waste of time. So I wasted three months out of my time. They gave me a little bit of money to do it. And they threw it back in my face and was like, no, we're going another way. I was like, okay. So the guy's like, yeah, I knew they were going to do that, but just to get your right. I was like, you wasted my time. Like, I could have been doing something else. Yeah, productive. and right. Like, no, don't tell me, like, evil. you know, this is a big thing. Like, don't tell me I'm going to, you know, write a story for these people. Right. And then just tell me no. Like, I knew they weren't going to take it, but they want to go in this way instead. But can you d- just change that to this? It's like, nah, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, that's, not just, how, that's how things go. No. Yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So I was like, I was like, you know what? You're fired. <laughs> just leave me alone. <laughs> just go. Just, so then I just, just you know, I write four pages a day, no matter what. Just Damn. could be anything. Just that's, four pages. Yeah. I won't go to sleep until I do four pages a day. That's this. So I'm right sitting now. there in bed, you know, the fucking light going away. So hopefully, you know. I want a dry run for sure. I want a dry run. But I have no desire to direct or produce. I can't. I'm not a people person. I don't like directing. Well, I don't like it. I just my vision isn't that way. Like I don't want to tell people what to do because I'm I'm sure so. I don't know. I didn't I didn't like directing. Well, yeah, no, I don't like it. <laughs> Definitely like writing, writing and kind of just putting things together. Creating the story yourself. Yeah, yeah kind of structuring the story, not kind of. Cause I don't I don't I don't really get what a director does. Because I don't I don't get it. Like what are they doing? Like every, the the writing's there, the Rapes script's there. All the actresses have yeah. you not been paying uh, attention lately. Well, now, <laughs> now that there's now that there's a lot of jobs open in Hollywood, yeah, I will gladly take any one of the studio jobs. Yeah. I'm not gonna touch anybody. I just want the job. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna tell you what I thought. All right, be all honest, right. yeah, go for it. So, like I said, prior, I approached the movie skeptically. Oh, good, yeah. And uh, Hot five. so the first thing that I noticed right away. In, 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 I don't want to lump you into a category, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like when you watch things of this nature of 
some somebody's friend of a friend or something did something and it's I fucking like, hate that like a you know like you're check out my thing. nephew's friend did yeah so having <laughs> seen up, a carol. bunch of those yeah nobody Why cares carol carol's the best name for carol sure. and karen yeah. so good karen's i like karen yeah <laughs> she likes her own facebook post like oh you bitch <laughs> what's wrong with that so i i've i've seen a bunch of these so i, I approached it with the same kind of skeptical skeptical hippo face and uh the first two things that i noticed right away the the way it was shot in the from the start, that very first scene, I was like, okay, this. I'm trying to think it, of the first scene. I don't him remember. banging her. No, that's not the first scene. The flashbacks. Starts the flashback, with the, yeah. the flashbacks. Starts with the oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. With a little kid. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, it's in the kitchen with the father. That's right. Yeah. Um. From that very first scene. Burn the cake. Yeah. I. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> I saw. I, re- I remember it now. I'm, I'm. My memory's pretty bad, but once it gets reminded, when. When he the, when the husband comes in to talk to the wife and she's making the cake again, that's when I was like, all right, the way this is shot already is different, and just like the way the scene cuts were and everything like that. Then the second thing, and he was there while I was watching it. We watched it separately, but I was watching and I was saying to him, um, was the actors were good, like you know they weren't the greatest in the world, but they were believable. You could yeah. like it wasn't when I watched it, I didn't go like. Oh, it's so obvious you're acting. Not like a crappy yeah. sci-fi Dude. movie. Yeah. Right. That Talented. was a big thing to me yeah. because I've seen some movies where you're like, D- you you got like your friend on the block to do this who's not yeah. an actor. Like, Just about every YouTube Mark series. from the yeah. deli. These guys were, these people were real yeah, actors. Yeah, they were actors. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah. so we, we casted for what, four days in New York City. So we rented studio space in New York City, sent out casting calls. So about 500. Did you guys have a couch that looked no, like this? Sick. No, no it's black and leather. <laughs> it was black and leather. You need something that cleans up easier than that. <laughs> yeah, much easier. Wipe right off, Lysol. We had what, like, about 500 auditions we went through over four days. Oh, wow. And then Not including back. the the last, uh, when, we, uh, when we couldn't find the... Uh, the Lysol? The young hooker. No, we always oh, had yeah. the Lysol on deck. Yeah. The, the young hooker, we did another... But, um, like, we were like, oh, we're going to do... Like, we did one We did one short film before that, and we were like, it came out shitty, because, like... I did the camera. We did, <laughs> did the camera, and then, we're like, we casted it online. And, like, we never we never saw the people act before we had them come in. So we're like, yo, we, we got... We, before we sat down, we're like, yo, we got... Taking their word for it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. this guy's a good like, actor. It's like... He's... He was got, on like, Craigslist. He was good. Yeah, like, we got one shot. Like, let, let's do it right. We got studio <clears> space, like, did everything, like... It was like, like a kosher. It was like kosher. You know what I mean? It was like it was yeah. the way you're supposed to do it. Well, you could tell. That was one of the bigger yeah, things that you. stood out to me immediately. And I was like, okay, I can actually watch this. Yeah, yeah, you could get brought into it. It's not... It's so funny. Like, whenever you see shit acting... It throws uh, you it, off immediately. Yeah, it you're throws like, you you're off. You're so disgusted. And at the same time, you're like... Like, just in your head, do you think that's how people normally talk? Like... When they're talking like this, like you and can they're, they're, hear they're, that like, it's forced and yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. that for me, like when it, you see that shitty acting, you know, anytime you watch a movie, you have to have a certain ability to suspend your belief, right? Right. Even yeah. though you know you're watching actors, like it has to be enough to ha- make you suspend your belief, where you can watch this as if it was like a real thing. And when they're that bad, you can't do that. So immediately, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I can watch this and and see how it goes. Um, because those two aesthetics for me immediately, like. After that, I'm like, I know I'm not going to watch five minutes of this film. And uh, I was glad that that's how it went because I would have felt really bad being like, Nick, I can't get through your <laughs> yeah. uh, You we, guys we can't try, come. but I'm yeah, sorry. I couldn't get through uh, it. But, um, so I thought, that, I thought that was real good. And then the first 20 minutes were a little bit slow. Like, yeah. It took a little while to get into the story. Um, but <coughs> I liked, I thought, I li- really liked the way you guys developed it. Like, I thought... I didn't think the pacing was bad. Like, I know you said it felt mm-hmm. like... It you know, definitely sprints towards the that, end. That's about been my, pretty much the feedback that we've been getting yeah. is it was a little fast. Right. But I didn't think towards, it was... Towards the end, though. Like, uh, I, I agree with what D-Rock was saying is, uh, you know, the beginning in, in setting it up was it, slow. It, 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 yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't say slow, like, not at least not in a negative way. Well, it, it was if, just... If you look at the back end to the front end, it appears slow. Right. But in terms of, like, a normal movie, it's, I yeah. didn't think it was slow. Okay. Yeah, you know, you know average I mean? it out. It was okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fast, slow. There you go. go right to Perfect. Like once, once you, once the, once it's developed, it does go fast. Like once you kind of get abreast of what the the plot is and what's going on, yeah, it cruises. Um, but I didn't necessarily think that was bad. Um, so I thought it was paced 
pretty well. And then uh, the other thing that stood out to me was uh, the the score was good. I thought the music was good. Yeah, we had yeah. A, we had an um, an original that was, that was an original composition that was made by a composer. I thought that was cool because yeah. yeah, really most good. films like that, you know, most like. Yeah, it's like indie film, whatever you want to call it, don't have that shit. So I thought that was real well, good. Yeah, we had the uh, the composer. Yeah, uh, uh, composer was uh, Stephanie Zuccaro. She was um, a family friend. So my mom has this friend Anna, and they were talking one time about the film. And my mom comes and she's like, Anna's uh, niece, you know, makes movies for film. <laughs> she did and I was like, nobody cares, she Karen. Did a mixtape. <laughs> no, but like it's always like when your mom tells you things, it's like nothing of the sort. It's like no, she's actually a music teacher for something. Like it was actually <laughs> she was like an actual like composer for a film. So I kind of just contacted her and I was like. It kind of worked out. It was kind of cool, but like it, n- it never works out that way. Yeah, like, nothing ever falls into place that yeah, way. Yeah, it was, and it was, it was great working with her. Was great. She put something together really nice. It kind of. She was going. She was telling me about it one time. She said every time something happens, she had the, this original piece, and every time something would happen, that one piece would be the focal point that would just get kind of broader and broader. That same initial tone was there, but as it gets deeper and deeper, as like something, as the story develops, and that was just a really. Cool it, idea. It b- builds with the story. It, yeah. Exactly. The music yeah. builds with the story. So it gets darker, lighter, happier, yeah. more, but it's still one like metronome of a of a sound. Right. And uh, the original the original music too, we had uh you know, some local artists. Yeah. Uh, the ending? The end uh, hip hop. The end hip hop was yeah. actually a, a group I used to work I used to manage back that song's about ten years old. Oh wow, really? Uh they the group was uh enough said. Uh they used to do hip hop. We uh, they're actually military. They're both still in the uh, Air Force, and that's kind of why they didn't go any further. Okay. Every time we were completing a CD, one would get deployed, then the other <laughs> guy would come back, then he would go deployed. Sorry, we can't go on tour. We're yeah, uh, busy pretty, killing people. Yeah. Like it, it took busy us, making these, these mixtapes. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it was. But they were decent mixtapes, you know, for the time. And then uh, Sarah, right? Uh, Sarah. Uh, Sarah P. Sarah P. Uh, she did this uh, one of the songs in the car. Fallen to You, I think it was called, yeah. Uh, no, 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 it was uh, Over the Fifth. Over the Fifth, yeah. Uh, it's a good song, nice R&B song. Uh, there's another guy in there, Masquerade. He did, uh, with, when he was banging the hooker at the end, with the trophy, he mm-hmm. did an R&B yeah. song. Uh, what was the other? Uh, Fall 85. The, Fall 85, uh, yeah. Uh, shout out to Justin. These are all local. Yeah, all local, local guys. Musicians. Like within like five miles of us. That's awesome. Uh, and then uh, Tom's Kids Band. Uh, the metal band Reluctant Mortem. Yeah, they're in that were, running scene with the, yeah. the nice the, guy in the background. They actually okay. uh, tour the country, so they're actually. Uh, yeah, I think they're on, what, in Ohio right now. Some and they, they do something with Heineken, like Heineken sponsors their tour, or some, oh, something sure. like that. They were, you know, that's cool that you guys like kept it. Yeah, because I, I hate that too when you go watch a film and it's like the music is so like generic, generic. It's like buy this one for fifty bucks. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it completely takes away from the the yeah. scene in the movie. Yeah. It's like you could have bought all shit off of Pond Five and done yeah. It. Yeah. Like, yeah, literally could have just yeah. gone wherever you know, and that was it. Like some guys, uh, the guy uh, who was doing our social media actually found the girl who was singing. Yeah, she, we, we went and to the same high school. I didn't even know her. He, he sent me yeah. a text message. He's like, "This girl's really good. Uh, you should contact her and see if you could use one of her songs." So I was like, yeah, you know, like 15 years old, what do you know? So I listened to it, I was like, oh, it's pretty good. So I contacted her, met up with her, and she gave me a CD, and I was like, oh, you know, definitely going to use one song. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's good when things fall into place like yeah, that. Like, it, usually you don't get that. We but, are yeah. really lucky where a lot of things <clears throat> a lot of things just fell into place. I mean, yeah, but we were persistent, though. Like, I don't even know how many emails I sent out. It's like, hey, my name's Nick. And I was like, fuck, I hate writing emails. <laughs> It's like, I'm from, I don't know, we're doing this film, and everyone's like, yo, shut the fuck up, we do not care. Nobody cares about your fucking mixtape, Nick. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much. We tried to film at this um, train station, this old train station in Wontaw, the, that was going to be towards the end scene, and so it's like a train museum, where they had these old tracks, and this old, like, 19, like, early 1900s, like, train car. And so they had to have like a like a committee meeting of like the museum committee meetings <laughs> oh, for them to whether to vote whether they're gonna let us film or not. It took like what three months for them to get yeah. back to us. We had, I had to go win. It's and, like, not that serious train station. Yeah. I was like, yo, we'll be there for like 
an hour. <laughs> like, calm down. It's like, uh, the committee has voted in, in, in preparation. Well, he's like with, a bunch of 60 year old dudes yeah, are like yeah. in the Elks Club. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's exactly what it was. Like, we have, uh, decided not to allow you the film. Like, oh, cool. Like, you could have texted me that. Like, that would be fine, like, three months ago. Go check like, your diaper, asshole. You know what? While we were waiting, we filmed this scene and we done. Fuck yourself. We probably could have just went in there and did it really quick, and they yeah. would never know. That gorilla shot but, in the, uh, the cemetery scene in uh, that, <clears> Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Straight up gorilla. That's a great story, actually. Uh, <laughs> shit boot. Shit boot. So I, as we're filming this, I already thought, like, yo, if we ever interview, like, I'm going to tell the story. So we're held up. The, Weird. The, we just ran out of time. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> Fuck. So, anyway. so uh, we're in this. We're in this apartment in Bedstuy where we filmed for two days. So we're in. We're like we're on a, right off Malcolm X Boulevard. So we're like in this crappy little. You Airbnb. know the rule with that, right? No. Okay. Up here <laughs> in any city. If you're on a street named for peace, it's usually the most violent. Yeah, that's that's the general rule of thumb. MLK, yeah, or MLK, Malcolm, Malcolm X, X yeah. Chris Rock, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're in this uh, crappy apartment in Bed Stuy. Alarms going off. Still trying to break into my car. That's not me. I got a base model car. It doesn't even have an alarm. Come on, Nick, get it together. But uh, so we're in this shitty apartment in Bed Stuy, and the morning comes up, and we're, like, we're gonna go shoot the cemetery scene. We're shoot totally shooting a guerrilla style, which means no permit, no nothing. Literally unpack the gear, get in, get the shot, and get the fuck out because it's illegal. You gotta have permits for all this shit. So we're loading up the apartment, rolling, loading up the gear into the into the car, and we're, we have like a really strict time schedule that day because we gotta get back to the to the apartment to do other shots. And after loading up the gear. I step in a giant pile of fucking horse shit on the sidewalk. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't have anything. Like, I'm like fucking, I got no clothes in me. I have nothing. Like, I'm just kind of just literally just running on Red Bull and like two hours of sleep trying to get these poppy shots off. Yeah, Red Bull. Yeah, Red Bull. So, <laughs> Perfect I'm, like, time. I'm like, what the got fuck wins. do I do? So, <laughs> one of the, so, I put a fucking <clears throat> plastic bag over my foot <laughs> and just continue the day. I have no time to ch- no time to change shoes, and so I've been meeting some people I haven't even met before. A crew that was there was a new crew guy, new um, what was his name? Mike. This new guy. Oh, no, yeah, Mike. The new grip guy, Mike. He's coming onto the project. He's play, uh, sw- subbing someone out. So the first time I meet this guy, I'm like in shit clothes. I got a fucking shoe full of shit over a bag <laughs> on my foot. I'm like, hey, I'm Nick. I'm the, the writer, director, doing everything. He's like, you're shit boot. This dude I ever met before is calling me fucking shit boot. So I was named shit boot for the rest of the project. You know, and you know that I'm not gonna let this go, right? His new name is Shit Boot. I still, I still no get called Shit Boot no matter what. Yeah, yeah you're gonna hear right. about this at work. So, <laughs> shit Boot. Yeah, it was. It's like yo, yo, they were yelling Shit Boot across the apartment. Like, hey, yeah, Shit Boot, get over here, we're doing a shot. And I was like, that's oh, awesome. Even at the premiere, that's they were calling him Shit Boot. Calling me Shit Boot everywhere. I was like, everybody's I, all dressed like, nice. Like, like, I signed, like I signed this dude's check, and he's calling me Shit Boot. I was like, great, that's fucking awesome. You should have signed it, Shit Boot. I should have. Can you legally? Um, shit Boot Productions. It's not a bad name. <laughs> yeah. Um, what they call me, call me uh, Lead Base Productions. I'm like, you can't just fucking print it. It's not that hard. <laughs> shit Boot Productions. Shit Boot Productions. SB, S- SB Productions. SB Productions. So when you get sued and you have to shut down, you go to Shit Boot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give you. I love you... how you say when, not if. If. Yeah. No, yeah. no when, when you get shut down. down. I'm on my third company now. So. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't have got this one tattooed, but whatever. <laughs> So I'll tell you what I thought, what I didn't like. Now oh, I'll give course. you, I'll give you the negative. What else did you like, though? Um, yeah, let's, let's well, I mean, all the actors were. I mean, the actors were good. You the know, actors uh, were good. Was, some of them do Broadway. They were, you know, yeah. a lot of them were really talented. You, I, that's the biggest thing I could tell right away. They were actually actors. Yeah, yeah. it's not your cousin down the block. Yeah, you know, that's like a, an aspiring dream. Yeah. So yeah, that I mean, was a that was the biggest thing. One of the biggest things right away. Um, like I said, like the score, like the actors. I liked the way it was shot. I thought you guys uh, like had some interesting, um, and not that I'm like you know, I don't really, I don't know shit about Me films neither. or anything like that. But <laughs> I thought like you know like the the scene where he's inside the car uh, talking to the hooker and he's trying to get her to come to the show or whatever. Mm-hmm. I liked the way that was shot. You know, like you kind of felt inside, inside the, the car. car. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was good. Like you know, a lot of these amateur type things they're not shot very well. Like yeah. it's, you know, they would have filmed it from like outside of yeah. the car, outside the, the window, you roll the window yeah. down. So I thought that was good. Um, the movie overall felt professional. Yeah, it really did. Like, yeah, it like, didn't seem like a. You knew it was low budget, but not like it looked like shit. You don't yeah. know how no, low yeah, budget. Yeah, 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 it didn't. It didn't, it look, didn't like look like, like the real no. budget that we actually spent. No, on it. you could tell it wasn't a you know a studio movie, but it didn't look grungy. Like it cost forty thousand dollars. Right. It didn't look like for 
when I say low budget, I don't mean low budget in terms of quality. I, I understand. But you. it 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 looked like a legit movie, you know. And uh, so that was one of the things I was yeah. telling Chris when I was watching. I'm like, dude, this is like. And you saw the, the you saw the 1080p. So yeah, you didn't even see it, the full 4K Vimeo. That's like super super compressed. Yeah. Where like if you see if you watch in like 4K on a 4K TV, it actually does feel different. It, yeah. You can see. I, gotta, the, I would imagine. You can see the pores on the dude's nose on a close up. You can see like nose hairs. It's crazy. Like the camera we used was a 4 4K red camera. Yeah, Chris it had was the red like scarlet. I think beautiful. Well, that red stood dragon. out. So that made it good to watch. Yeah. Um, but the. The crew was professional. Yeah, so the crew was It wasn't tell. like we hired like an amateur crew. Like right. these guys work on legit films. They, they work yeah. on legit and, Well, it came through, definitely. All the crew was like, you know, they, they really should have been working on that project, to be honest. Like, you know, they really should have been, they really yeah. should be working on major, right? you know, major films. So I would definitely like to thank them for yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. They were um, awesome. Yeah, I thought that was, that's that I don't know much about like, um, actually a buddy of mine, I was telling you, one of my good friends who um, I'm actually going to his wedding in May. He Sorry. works in he works in post production. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Actually, no, his wife's made it cool, but um, still, he works in post production for Marvel Studios. So like, i when I talk with him, he tells me some shit. I'm not by most of the time. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about? But he tells me about like some of the process, um, and how like putting the film together and finishing is is hard, tedious. Yeah, and so like, I don't know shit about editing or any of that, but it didn't. It didn't come <laughs> off choppy or anything like that. Yeah, you know, from uh, my observation, my untrained eye. That, that's what I was gonna say. Is the, the the flow of the movie seemed good? Like it seemed like it was edited very well. You know, it didn't. They, I didn't get any like you know jumping around or mm-hmm. like yeah. it, jump cuts. It, and, yeah, it was yeah. like it wasn't hard to follow. Smooth. Like, yeah, it was very smooth. Exactly. Yeah. yeah the the editor Brian uh, Brian Doors, he actually works on the Harry. He's the editor for the Harry Connick Jr. Show. Okay. So oh, okay. another professional editor that oh, yeah. you know shouldn't be working on <laughs> just, a little. Just fell into place. <laughs> just fell into place. Right. <laughs> he actually. Uh, <clears throat> Um, his boss works, uh, his boss's wife works with my girlfriend. They've been friends for like 10 years, so she mentioned it, and he was like, oh, just meet with this guy, you know, he's really young and, you know, into it. So I met with him, and just over a conversation, we kind of clicked. So, like, nice. he had, you know, he had good ideas, and this is, he's like, this is what I'm, you know, this is the style I want to go with, kind of matched with, uh, the cinematographer's style that he wanted to shoot with. It's fucking great. Like, you know, you can't add. Everything's falling into place. It's good. I, I would like to thank that guy for canceling last minute and maybe me lose whatever hair I had left. I couldn't imagine what this film would be like if that dude actually abided to the contract and worked on the film. We probably would have gotten film festivals. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's not a knock, but this guy's style is like artsy fartsy, you know. Like, right. Yeah. Like, what, like old... Everything is beautifully, like, you know, framed in. Yeah, but we, we, we wouldn't have got half the shots yeah, we would have got. We would have had, like, a 25 out... minute short. Yeah. And I mean, Chris's sh- his shots are amazing, yeah, but I, I he's like good. he's in like a nice linear story, like his, story oriented. The way he versus... filmed it was story oriented, not set, like not, it was still not set up. Fancy not shot coming from like, not coming from yeah, yeah through, around, spinning around. Like, the okay, water. Water. you're drinking a fucking bottle of water. Like, like, we yo, don't need, you know, I don't think you need that for 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 your movie. It didn't I think, call for it. No, you didn't need that. I yeah. think that would have cheapened a little bit. I <laughs> thought you guys were telling a story, so the way it was shot fit exactly. That's it was, exactly. It was about the story, but not there's, the, there's a not the artistic big, shots. With film festivals, there's just a big. I don't even know. It's like a like fucking. If it doesn't look appeasing, like you know, mm-hmm. you have to have this shot from behind the shoelace that goes up ninety degrees and <laughs> yeah. you know bounces off it's the just, sun. These people to me are like the same people that like you know what are the sommeliers, the wine assholes? Uh, yeah. I guess cranberries in the shut the fuck up. There's a hint just of drink wood the wine. Yeah, these, watch the movie. Yeah. Like you can I'm sure there's a level of appreciation for some of that stuff, especially in the industry, but like ultimately at the end of the day You're there for, for when you ask most people why they watch movies. Yeah, do you want a certain aesthetic? Sure, and especially with certain movies. If you're watching a superhero movie, you, you want to see the want. aesthetic. Yeah. But I like movies because I like to to have the story. I like to have character development. I like that stuff. I hate movies. That get ended without resolution. We just watched this uh, the movie the other day. I came home. One of our other roommates was watching this movie, Ark, on Netflix. And did you see it? Yeah. The ending, fuck. I was like, this is fucking retarded. <laughs> they didn't resolve oh, anything. The story was just left wide open. To me, it's like that writer just got bored and quit at the end. Like, don't tell the fucking story. It's like The Departed. I feel like The Departed. The guy just like, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, cut, they cut his salary. You're like, all right, not paying me no one's going to kill everybody. Watch your mouth. Yeah, but that worked at least. Yeah, it worked. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you just end a movie abruptly, fuck you. Tell the goddamn story. For me, anyway. You know what I'm it's saying? It's actually so. not that easy to end a movie correctly. Yeah. Like, uh, 
It's a lot harder than you think to actually end it and have it fit. Because, you know... I, Don't defend these fucking guys. I'm not, but I'm just saying, <laughs> it's really fucking hard. But like The Sopranos, like that had an open ending, but you you kind of knew, you know, it could go one of two ways. The right. arc is like, where the fuck are you going? Yeah. Like, there, there's literally like, you can go left, you can go right, you can go straight, you can even stop. Like, there's no way to actually settle it with the story they presented. No. There's almost it, too much going it, on. It was like, you can't, you can't yeah, wrap everything there's no, up. There's no, you need closure. Yeah. You know, at yeah. least... Kill everybody at least. Then. At least kill everybody, so I know that this is not. Just get them arrested. Whatever it is, just have something that'll just make me a promise. Yes. If you ever have this happen, just fucking kill everybody. I would love to. All right, end it. Like I can't figure out this. Everyone dies. Everyone Fuck them. I mean, we tried. Yeah, <laughs> you came close. You did come close. Right, I give you tried. that. So, I, yeah, the. I don't. I don't know what my point was, but there's a lot of movies on Netflix like that. It like, bothers me. Yeah, the, a lot of Netflix is just buying everything. And a lot of them are, I mean, nah, whatever. But a lot of them are shitty. So, yeah, like there's I, definitely some shit in there. There's, there's some good stuff, dude. The, oh, there is some good stuff. An interesting uh, point, because uh, our other our other partner in the podcast, Eric, who couldn't be here tonight, he had to be at a wake. But he watched the movie, and I spoke to him today. And we were talking about it, and he even said, he's like, he's like, the movie was kind of a bummer. Like, the story line, he's like, it got yeah. me down. He's like, he's like, I liked it, but he's just like... Uh, I wonder where the movie ends up. I was like, I can see it being a Netflix film. Because... That'd be cool. Well, I listen, and I'll tell you why. And this is... I, I painted my point to Eric like this. Like you said, Netflix will buy up anything. anything. They just put, for content. Yeah, just, they're, yeah. They're trying to get as much content. Yeah, just so no one else can buy it, they'll yeah. buy it. But, like, there, there's... Those movies find their audience, right? Like Sharknado and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Where, your movie was better than Sharknado. I would hope so. <laughs> it was. So if Sharknado can get on there and it can find its audience, I feel like <coughs> yours would too. I could definitely see that movie finding its audience somewhere through yeah. Netflix. 100%. I just That'd hope cool. it's not the same audience that uh, is complaining about Peter Rabbit. <laughs> Do you see that? Oh, uh, man. That's actually all right. really funny. Uh, Sony um, put out a movie, Peter Rabbit. You yeah. know, Winnie the Pooh, Peter Rabbit. I think it's Winnie the Pooh. No, no, it's um, a fairy tale. It's a, fa- right? it's a, it's a fable, fable, but it's um, I'm trying to think of who who wrote it. Uh, Aesop. I don't think it's an Aesop. Aesop Rock. No, Aesop Fable. Aesop Rock. Aesop Rock's my man, though. That's what. Uh, that's the first thing Aesop. I think of Aesop Rock. But um, they got parents complaining about this kids movie. Yeah, Aesop Rock. 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 Aesop and they know that, so they're trying to kill they're the guy. To, the guy's been trying to kill the fucking rabbits all movie long. And parents are complaining that it's teaching bullying and food allergies are nothing to make light of. This is a fucking movie. Well, you guys have a food allergy. Yeah. We do. Yeah. We do. <laughs> Who is I'm it? Saying, uh, like, Louis C.K. that's like, I'm not saying I'm okay with killing kids, but if a peanut's going to take you out... Yeah, yeah, baby. You might not deserve to live. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> oh, you're one of them? Yeah. Oh, it's actually, boy. It's actually really fucked up because as we're shooting that scene, we're making about, I don't know, a dozen peanut butter sandwiches. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, put the peanut butter. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's, I'm going to go stand over there. So we're fucking making the peanut. I'm fucking sitting there dying. Like, I'm getting beat around. I'm getting itchy. Just, like, being, like, right next to it. I'm like, how's it look to the camera? <laughs> looks good. Oh, it's really good. I got to go outside. I got to go outside for a minute. Yeah, you got the, got the EpiPen on stat. Like, they, they pretty much, what is that, fake outrage Twitter? Pretty yeah, much yeah. made Sony apolo- they, put out an apology. Sony had to apologize for, like, to for like manipulating. Bully. Yeah, I'm looking at his parents. Was like, parents are boycotting yeah. and, like, yeah. Sony we, apologized. There was something Jesus today. Last Christ. week's guest of ours, we, we, our, our last guest last week, we, we, we got real into the whole social justice warrior oh, bullshit that. and all this, like, ugh. I, I would get back into that with you, but that's a conversation that will go on. We go. Yeah, off on we'd be here forever. I I get the feeling we're I'll probably on the, get fired. We're too, on so. the same page with this. Um, I think everybody is. Everybody's pretty much on the same page, but well, except for that, not. except for that twelve percent of Twitter that except gets upset at kids, everything. Kids. That's my generation raising a bunch of fucking pussies. That's what it is. How old are you? Thirty-seven. Okay. So it oh, pretty so much, you're, yeah, you're the young gun in the room. Turned yeah, 25 last week. My kid's special. <laughs> no, your kid's not yeah. fucking special. Special to you. He's not special <laughs> to fucking anybody else. Nobody, no, nobody is special. You know, you, nobody. Just bullies. You're gonna get beat up. 
shit happens. You know. You're gonna get, you're gonna get blackberries thrown in your mouth. Yeah. You'll be fine. You'll be all right. You, you might die with blackberries, but you know. Yeah. That happens. Sorry. You see that? It's fucking... But I, I think that you guys would find your audience there. I really do. I, I, I think so. And uh, the the movie um, <coughs> fits with, like, the Netflix model, in my opinion. That's what I thought. I could see it. Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, I could... The avenue is there is just film festivals and... Let's get an exception. Why is it only film festivals? Because that's where that's where people are. Film festivals. That's where people that really though still. Yeah, yeah. it's anything that ends up on Netflix for the most part, or any on online streaming service is acquired through acquired somehow through marketing or winning a film festival. Hmm. That's like the I would say what ninety percent. You're telling me is. Sharknado won a fucking film festival. Well, Sharknado well, Shark was Shark FX, Shark right? Uh, or sci-fi, 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 something sci-fi. like that. Right, but still, or a B minus celebrity. Yeah. 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 There's um, one festival I was looking at who got in over us, and like eight of them have B and up celebrities. One of them yeah, was a, like, there was a movie starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Like, what the fuck? Come on. Yeah. You know, totally. there's, a big, there's you gotta, a big blurred line and saturation of big Hollywood studios going into film festivals as like an indie. Like, small as independent. Indie. Yeah. So when you enter a film festival, they're like, what's your budget? It's like anything under. Anything considered like under what two hundred fifty grand? Is, uh, anything under two hundred fifty thousand dollars is considered indie. So even for us, like to do under two hundred fifty thousand dollars, that's someone with what eight times the more budget than we do. You're going, you're going up against films that have eight million dollar independent budgets, which is not independent. No. It's some major A company funneling money through some little sister studio with a B plus yeah. actor in it, and they're throwing. And you look at like Sundance. Sundance every film is over like a million dollar budget, and that's not independent film. Independent film is kind of what we're doing, kind of people trying to tell a story and kind of <clears throat> with a s- stupid small budget, not with a studio backing you up. And there's no real, there's like what, two real independent film festivals left. It's like, it's like independent film, like under, under $50,000. Is one of them the Southampton Film Festival? I don't know. I haven't looked at that one yet. I think it takes 50000 to get to Southampton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, is the independent, like, because you can get a star to agree for... <clears throat> SAG minimum sixty thousand dollars, so you can film something you know quickly for forty. So you have a hundred thousand dollar budget with Jake Gyllenhaal. Right. You know it's you you yeah. can't really compete with that unless you're. There's, oh, sure. there's you know, some yeah, major. You're, money, you're yeah. willing to give him a role later on, or right. you know, there's got to be something going on where. You know. In the the being independent film festivals are just being blindsided by just major money, because they can. And they want because it's like want, anything else, all good things get co opted. Yeah, eventually. they're slumming. Eventually, these studios are literally just slumming into film festivals because they can, and there's money to be made. That's because they get picked up by Netflix. And yeah. Get, yeah, I feel like that's that's the the model for everything right now. Like if you look at anything that was like artistic is being taken over and like controlled. Like you could even look at like um like craft beer. Like mm-hmm. craft beer used to be like small, you know, like a niche craft, market. Yeah, like it, and. It was all about the breweries. Now, if you look at it, a lot of these breweries are now owned by Anheuser Busch. It's like, yeah. oh, cool. So we're just gonna buy everything up, and you know what? Yeah. No, no, it's still this person's brewery, but we own it. We'll give you your lemon flavored ale. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, it's yeah, it's kind of it's just kind of disheartening because it's kind of just you're trying to bring something to an audience, trying to get feedback from a film festival, and they're like, eh, now fuck you. I'm like, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Yo, like, I didn't like you guys anyway. Fuck off. Yeah. It's, all right. it's like, yo, I fucking can't wait to go to the school festival. We ain't having you. Yo, fuck this no, film fuck festival. this place. Fuck this sucks anyway. There was a nobody a, cares about your independent movie, Carol. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> There's um, a festival in Queens, and uh, I wrote them. You know, I was like, I'm from Queens. I grew up in Queens. You're literally the festival is held two miles from where I grew. I grew up in Flushing. Okay, so I was literally it was in Forest Hills. I was like, it's literally two miles. And they're like, oh, well, no. I was like, get yeah, hometown, <laughs> you know? On. I mean, let me try. Come on. Just, you know, please. Come on, Carol. Hometown. They're like, oh, no, we only accept international films. I was like, well, you could have put that in the fucking uh, application. Yeah. Hold yeah. on. Hold on. I'm going to drive up to Canada real quick. I'll send you from there. Yeah. Let's fucking. <laughs> I grew up in Queens. Just fuck have one person yeah. from fucking just Queens. One. Just one. Just one local boy. Come be on. fair. Be fair. <laughs> but no. Nah. Fuck that. So what did you think, Yarbs? You I thought it, it was good. Um, a lot of the things that you were saying, one, one of my favorite things, uh, besides it just being a hooker fight, 
was. <laughs> I hope the fight was fun to film, though. For you, I, I yeah. appreciated uh, when the one girl gets punched in the face, and like a, a lot of times when you see fights and stuff, and people get punched and they, they just like react no fine, like that. That's not that's not real. Like getting punched in the face sucks. Yeah. It hurts, especially yeah. if you're not used to getting punched in the face. So the realism in that, I. What the fuck is going on? So oh god! The, the remote Hold on, on a second. Yeah. Um, I agree about that. And what I thought was uh, pretty funny was like I like that she put a tampon on her nose. I, was, I used to box. Tampon on the nose, easiest uh, way to stop a bloody nose. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. So yeah, I've never read that. Explain. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, he didn't. He had no idea what the tampon on the nose was for. Really? Yeah, I read that. I was like, what the fuck? Was she getting jiggy with the tampon in the nose? <laughs> like, I mean, so he, we he got a computer uh, in our office here that. Um, can be remoted into and uh, somebody remoted into it right now. <laughs> so that's what you guys are hearing. Um, Sounds like porn. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I uh, <clears throat> when I saw her doing that, I was like, oh, right on the tampon <laughs> in the nose. <laughs> I, I knew some people would appreciate. It. That was a nice little uh, ode to to boxing, you know. Um. I don't want to get too far off topic, but where'd you box? Queens. The local gym. I was, uh, uh, fuck. No, no, no golden gloves, nothing like that. Just a way to keep me out of trouble. An right. attempt to keep me out of trouble, okay. which didn't work. It made me fight more outside right. because like, I knew. Because you knew you could? Yeah, now you, you know, know how to did fight. You, did you compete at all? I wasn't disciplined enough. Okay. I, I was a good athlete, just not disciplined enough. I was just. A bad kid. You know what though? I respect that, and I respect so. that you have the awareness enough to be like. Oh, it's yeah. no. Nah, I respect that. Well, you know what though? Obviously, of... you turned that around because you're pretty disciplined with your right. Oh so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Well, actually, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Not really. I'm disciplined in, like certain things, but like I understand that. But you said you write four pages every day. That yeah, I do that. So you're disciplined in that respect. The writing style, no. Right. Yeah. Okay. I can understand it because I'm. And I say this to people a lot. I'm the most undisciplined, disciplined person in the world. That's and Chris is, me and Chris have been friends for years, and he can tell you, he can sign off on that. I'm with, with like training and diet and shit like that. I'm super disciplined. But like, you know, doing laundry and folding <laughs> it and checking the mail. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not so much. Yeah, not, not the most disciplined guy. I but, did a lot of sparring because I was uh, heavier than everybody else. So it was like, you know, let somebody heavier hit you. Right. You know how uh, I remember uh, I used to fight a lot in Brooklyn, uh, my friend's gym. And uh, <clears throat> one day Zab Judah came. Oh, shit. And <laughs> watching him, it's just, you know, this guy's fucking fast. You know, I've never seen anybody this fast before. Right. So watching him close up and watching and watching, I was like, I want to get in there. I want to get in there. So I'm like, go ahead, go ahead. So, you know, I'm, t- I'm talking to him, and he's like, nah, uh, you're too heavy. It's like, too heavy? I was like, you know, I'm 205 pounds. I was like, I can't catch you. I was like, I'm not going to be able to hit you, so it, it wouldn't matter. I just want to get in there. He's like, nah, you're too heavy. He's like, just in case you do catch me? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, no. Nah. I'm not going to fucking hurt this guy. This guy's a fucking <laughs> world, you know, world champion at the time. Not at the time, but a little bit after he became a world champion. But uh, there's You got to be careful with that shit. I have... Um, no way he was letting me in there. I have some guys, you know, I train with some... <laughs> Some <laughs> top level guys, and uh, you do have to be careful because you never know who's going to be trying to make a name. For yeah, themselves. someone, like, someone yeah. trying to get a feather in their cap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yo, I fucking knocked him out. I caught Zach Judah. Fuck, I did yeah. this. I did that. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I can understand. Like, that. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mayweather's long time. Uh, oh yeah, the, uh, they made a big deal of him catching him once ten years ago in a sparring. You know, it's, it's sparring, but, sparring, but yeah. there's some so, people out there that. That's what they're trying to do, you know. Um, so I, I can understand that to a certain degree. Yeah, but, but still, um, you know, I'm fucking nineteen. You know, <laughs> just give me something. Well, give me something. I need something. Please. You can see I'm not that great, you know. <laughs> but uh, all right, let's get back to the movie because otherwise yeah. I'm gonna go oh, off on the yeah, yeah, yeah. talking about fighting. <laughs> I could talk about this we, shit we, all the time. We yeah, talk about everything. Yeah, but well, no, because I also didn't want to. You know, Chris was uh, giving what, his. What didn't you like? What would you change? What could have been done better? What could have been done better? Uh, everything. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> everything writers. always could be <laughs> Different writers. <laughs> Different director. Um, definitely. I can't think of anything that I would change necessarily. Like, uh, I mean, it everything worked together. Like, there was nothing, there was no glaring issues that I saw that really could have been changed to enhance the movie or anything like I that. I had one I, thing. I think, what do you think about the ending? The yeah. act, the very, very end. The very, the, so, so after, like, the, after the, the credit the, starts to roll. Yeah. That's, that one scene in the group. In the group. Um, it was interesting. Like, I, I almost, I almost kind of got the feeling of that this was this guy's thing now. Like, he was going to try and make new friends to enhance his life. Like, like Fight Club. Well, not even, not even like Don't fight, talk about it. <laughs> not even like Fight Club, but more almost where he's making like human sacrifices so to speak to to <laughs> in, enhance himself you know no. like he he found you know his 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 passion from the sorrow of what mm-hmm. had gone on so now maybe it's you know getting to the point where all right that's starting to wear off a little bit i have to bring some other people into my life now to you happen to notice their names at the end yeah see that's that's, that's where we're going to come in and tell you what it's from I did. I actually didn't. I did not notice the name. No. The the name tags represent the other three members of the four seasons. So he's fine in his group. So it was uh, what Nick, Nick and Bob. Nick, Bob, uh, Nick, Bob, and uh, Rich, Gordio. Bob, Nick. You should really uh, know the members <laughs> of the four seasons. <laughs> no, uh, Nick, Frank, Bob. Nick I would have never called all that because I, I couldn't tell yeah. you. The... And uh, the guy in the in the circle. His, uh, Joe for Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci was the one that, uh... Introduced, uh, the four seasons. Frankie Valli to the Four Frankie Seasons. To the, four season. the real Joe Pesci, that. the actor Joe Pesci. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's was not really, yeah. Nick, Frank? This so, is gonna piss me off. I'll tell you the one thing that I thought... That Tommy, I, that was it, Tommy. 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 Tommy Sorry, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you. So it's like him kind of coming into his own and kind of, like, now he's, now, you know, he's Frankie. Now he's Frankie. We right? got the band together. Now he's right. got the band together. Now it's going to be two to the valley. <laughs> so there was a lot of uh, Four Seasons hints. Like, the movie has nothing to do with Frankie Valley. Like, there's really not much. Right. It's, you know, it's just a couple of events from his life that he wanted to copy. But we did throw a lot of hints for Four Seasons fan, you know, yeah. just to tie things together. As right. a writer, you know, you do that. People might not pick up. They might. Yeah, but but if you little things that- like that, you know, like the song choices. You know, those are all the char- every char- well, just about every character in the film is named after a four after, season yeah, song. Yeah, that I didn't notice. So it was like little things like that that you know makes you happy as a writer. <laughs> yeah. you know? just being able to pull everything. Give you that, yeah. little, give you that little pat on the back of that <laughs> yeah, one. Little, uh... The only thing that's the train going by. Um, the only thing that I thought could have been changed was, um, but and you guys answered why it didn't happen uh, already before we even got into it was more on the psychological side of what was going through his mind. And I would have liked to see a little bit more of, like, what the father had going on. You know, you, you, you explained it, so it wasn't a mm-hmm. mystery. But I, I was almost hoping to see a little more of that just to get, like, uh, his mentality behind leaving as well. Those are the only two things that uh, I thought, like, story-wise, I was like, ah. Because I'm a little more. Yeah, yeah cause I'm big into it. I yeah. like that stuff. So, uh but you guys explained why you couldn't get into well, the, that already. So. The father, we actually wanted to make the scene a little longer, but uh, Nick's uncle was the um, yeah. My uncle's a singer. He was a the, real singer. He was the older version. The of older the dad. version. Okay. okay. So that was him singing. But it was his first time acting, and we didn't want to throw too too much at him. Yeah. Okay. Where where it starts so we, to where it starts like to he's look like he's acting. He, yeah. so, so he did a really great job for somebody that's never acted never before. Acted before. Yeah, he's only never singer. acted before in his life. Did an amazing job. You couldn't really tell. Right. Like he yeah, looked. Exactly like he looked comfortable. His he looked, yeah, he looked. Yeah. So I think if we would have just gave him a little too much, it might have pulled it down. Okay. So this okay. was like the perfect amount. That makes, makes sense. sense. Huh. So we, you know, had to sacrifice a little bit, but you still got, you know, you got, got the, the point. You get the essence of it. I think you definitely get the essence of everything, though. There's, I feel like in that, like there's nothing yeah. falls like overly short. Where you're like, oh, what the fuck? Like, why was that even there? Well, there, the other piece that I thought and it wasn't a big thing, but. Since you guys wanted to hear criticisms, yeah. Um, at first, I did not know that Dawn was not his biological daughter. Sherry. Oh, Sherry. What I, I the older, older one is not his biological daughter. Not his. So that kind of like, you know, it was like, oh, okay, you know, like that. 
not that it was a super important piece, but you find that out like midway through, and it's like, oh, okay, and it, uh, it kind of helps you understand the <laughs> dynamic of that their little family thing going on there. Um, but that's a real minor criticism. Yeah, we actually also cut a doc scene. Oh that yeah, we filmed. we filmed a beautiful looking doc scene. We had like a little, maybe five seconds of it in final cut, but uh, the, the win that day, the mics crapped the out. Mics so crapped you, had, you had the dad off, talking yeah. to the two kids, and you like even the, you know, like you had a little conversation that were kind of forset that, but we had to cut that out because the the wind and the mics was too much. Okay. So that was like a. It was a nice shot. Too. It, it, it was, was a beautiful, beautiful looking shot. Gorgeous. You had the. What was that Wanto Park? Wanto, Wanto State Park. On you had the, on uh, the docks. boats in the background, jet skis going across. Like it was looked nice. Yeah. And uh, the concept of the dialogue there was kind of, you know, him talking, like, you know, the Sherry's asking questions and he's ignoring her. He's talking to Dawn. So, yeah. like, they're at the table and all the other time, if you kind of notice, he kind of ignores her, like, yeah. just blows her off but focuses on the little girl. Right. Because that's his. Because that's yeah. his, yeah. you know, his, his daughter. Okay. So, we, you know, there's some stuff that probably didn't really make too much sense. There were some things, but it didn't pull away. Yeah, you right. Know, you were still able to put the pieces together. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, nothing, nothing derailed the story. Yeah, like there, there may be, you know, except for how question. shitty the story actually was. But yeah. Right, well, that's, well, that's, you, know, that's <laughs> you know, that's what happens. But like, uh, did you get the two names? Like, people, a lot of people had two names in the film. A lot of people got confused. Tell me, they got confused with the names. Like the lead characters, Chris, and then halfway through, they call him Frankie, Frankie yeah. and Chris and Frankie, Chris and Frankie, yeah. and then Marianne and Melissa, the hooker. Mm-hmm. I didn't pick yeah, up I, on that. Yeah, I know. So I didn't pick up on her. Because even though even the wife says it, like um, when they're in the diner, she's like, "Whatever yeah. the fuck you're going yeah. by." Or... So, Marianne is a four season song, uh, Frankie Valley song, mm-hmm. and uh, so he calls her Marianne because you know he Frankie. Wants to have that connection. He, he's in he that Frankie Valley. Her, her real name is Melissa, and when you can see when he's mad at her, like when he hits her with the money and yells at her, he's calling her Melissa, her real name. He's, he's, right. he's and coming out of that realm. Later on, when they're going through, you know, what she did, and he's telling her, you know, his real emotion, and, you know, she's laying there, he calls her Marianne. So his his love is only... His, he loves Marianne. Marianne. He as doesn't Frankie. love Melissa. Right. As Frankie. Uh, interesting. I didn't, yeah, I didn't pick up on that. Interesting. So everybody was like, oh, this, why does she have two names? He's just hooker. You know, hooker's not going to be like, my name's Cinnamon. Yeah. yeah it's, no. You know, she has a real name. Some of them. Some of them do. Some of them. They're not real people. No. <laughs> <It's sex. laughs> I mean, they're, they're, you know, sex dolls. Which, by the way, is amazing. I mean, uh, huge props on, because I heard this years ago. And I'm like, that's the most brilliant shit I've ever heard. You don't pay a hooker to fuck you. You pay her to leave. Yeah. 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 Common well, knowledge. Well done. Common knowledge. Well done. Such a great line. <laughs> there were a couple of good one liners. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Uh, what are your guys' criticism, right? What? Do, how do you guys feel? That, I like, mean, I can tear it down. Well, obviously, I know that because that's. I would yeah, expect yeah. that, but I would like to hear, you know, from the casual observers to the people here, like compare the criticisms. Is anything we say. Um, Make sense to yeah. match up with some yeah. criticisms at yeah. all? Like it's definitely, it, yeah. Because we're kind of had different eyes on it because we wrote the thing, we we're with it so many times, we went through the rehearsals. So like, I don't even see the film anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even, I don't even. Know. I get it. You just see what's wrong and what could have been better. Exactly. You see right. what could have been tightened up. And this this might be a real poor comparison, but if I go back and watch any of my fights, it's the same way. Yeah, you yeah. like. I don't see the fight. I see like. You see a mistake. Yeah. Could have thrown an elbow. Right. Yeah. You, know, you see so, shit like that. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That's yeah. pretty like, you know, you're your own worst, worst critic. Right. Right. Know? Right. But, that's why I would expect you guys to tear it down. So that's why I want to hear. I mean, so my, what's, give me each that, one of you, your biggest thing that you like, I should have done this better. And this, it's lacking this. Give me your, each one of you guys, give me your one thing. Hmm. Definitely could have given more direction in what I wanted the actors to do because it's my first time. I really didn't, wasn't sure how to direct the film. I could write. I can kind of put things together, but like actual process and kind of initiative of directing, like I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, yeah, say it more this way. But I could have been a little – could have been a better director for 100%. If we had a little more time, I could have done more takes and kind of not 
settled for certain things. Yeah. Not settling, but you know, just kind of being like, all right, let's do that. We got like another hour. Let's do it, let's do it two more times. I think we got almost perfect instead of saying like it's good enough. It's good enough. To, yeah, to, right. like, there was a lot it. of it's good enough. Yeah, a lot of, move stick. Let's go. We got. We got. We got. We got a, I will we got say though that no, none of the scenes in the movie came across that way. It, it was never like there, there are certain scenes in in movies, even higher budget movies, when you're like. Oh yeah, they just get to the end of the rope, and they're like, "No, fuck it, we're not doing this again." It's like, gonna have uh, to, yeah, it's gonna have to go. Just what was that, uh, the Dark Knight Rises when uh, what's his name dies? Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> she just dies like sitting in the car. Like what the fuck? I know you could die better. She's yeah. a good actress. Yeah. You could die better than that. You can't just flutter your eyes and you know pass out. What would you, what would you average about like what twelve? No, but nine takes per scene. Per side. Not, not even. Not even. No. It was less than that. Because I went through all those files to send, and yeah. there was a lot less than that, actually. I, I would say we probably did four takes Four takes per, per side. Angle. Okay. So you got, like, if we're having a conversation, you got four takes coming this way, and then four takes coming that way. Right. And there was some that were even two. Yeah. That, uh... You know, there was... The, the Mary Ann scene in the hotel when he's shaking her. Yeah. That was, one take. That was a one take scene. That was it. Well, they we were did like, it two times, but one take. Right, yeah. right. Like, it was all one straight run. We did maybe two or three of them where camera record, camera stop, no editing, no nothing, nothing. Just straight through. Angle. That's good because that, that was a pretty powerful scene and like a lot of. I think that's, I think that's like, my favorite yes. scene in the movie. Uh, the um, the other scene that that really got me was him sitting against the door. Mm-hmm. Oh, that yeah. was fucking. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> the door's fucking moving. It's like, yeah. holy yeah. shit. Yeah, that was. We uh, had we do- we had that. Uh, split screen right originally in the in the original script I, we wanted to construct this set where let's say this is the door and then it's kind of cut out so you kind of see both at this both exact yeah, same, both time. At the same time so you would see her banging his door you see him not answering the door yeah. but you kind of see from this this head-on angle which would have been really cool but you know we have the so money. now instead of cutting back and forth we have the way you that. see it now you're just seeing them both at the same time okay but I, and, um, I'll tell you, 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 you captured the emotion and the, you know. That was a, that was a rough one to film. Yeah, that was definitely. I can imagine. In there. So that was in my buddy's basement, the art director, uh, Justin Plotnick, were in his basement. He was, that was like, that was a last minute location too. So we had this location set up in Seacliff we were going to go do. And it just, just fell apart as usual. I was like, yo, Justin, like, I'm desperate. Can we please film your apartment? He's like, yeah, no problem. So we scouted out the apartment and it worked. It fit. It was, we shot there for two days, the last two days of filming. So we saved that last scene for the very last day of filming because that was that was a rough scene to film. They yeah. took the it took uh, half Sean, a day. Um, not Sean. Um, Tish, Dawn. Dawn. Victoria. She, uh, you know, she had to sit and you know. Yeah, I you mean, gotta, you know, really, Sean had to get uh, Ignacio had to get into uh, his yeah, character. Got the character. So he's that. got his headphones on. You know, however he's doing to get into that place. You mm-hmm. know, the emotional. Yeah. yeah. And then the girl was just sitting there, like you know. So everybody in the house, like nobody wanted was, to talk. It was, no, there, there was, yeah, it was. We did so, that scene from like what one, one, one p.m. to about six p.m. and we wrapped. At just that. that one scene that day. We we saved that whole day just yeah, for that just one for scene. That. So my buddy's upstairs. You know, he was, he has the uh, he has the basement <laughs> apartment. So his whole family's upstairs. Whole, <laughs> Vacuuming. Whole family's upstairs. I'm like, all right. I'm like, yo, if you hear something going down, like it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> so we're filming that, and then he comes down. He's like, is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah, everything's fine. It's fine. It was right above the kitchen, so they're doing dishes. They're vacuuming. Yeah. <laughs> Family's upstairs eating dinner. Just things are going down. And then, what is that? A snuff film down there? <laughs> and uh, well, the, in the final cut, the the music is over it, so you don't hear him yelping. You don't hear him scream. He's like screaming his lungs out. Like, it it was the intense. Girl screaming her lungs out. Yeah, like it, it really sounded like somebody was getting snuffed, doing something down there that wasn't supposed to. And oh, his mom comes down. Like, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's great. Thank it's fine. you so much for letting us film here. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Did you guys want dinner? So what about you? What's your biggest uh, uh, critique? I would say not enough depth. Just story-wise, I would have liked to well, that, that, go that, a little That comes down to more money, deeper. more time. Yeah, but I mean, that's still, you know, that's what I wanted. I wanted a little more, a uh, little more... Backstory depth into him, like definitely could have played with the backstory. But that would have been that would have been cause some good stuff. We yeah, we definitely should have put a more flash like eighty scenes in there from the eighties. Mm-hmm. Right, that would have been cool to film too. But the flashbacks were cool because when we finished filming, we had a the initial film had no fa- flashbacks in it. So the Just original one, the open uh, in the car. Yeah, it had that, that car flashback. Okay, but um, at the end of that it was about what the finished script's about seventy pages. So you figure a minute per page, you're like, all right, we'll be about at 70 minutes. 
So at the end of filming, we had about 55 minutes, which was like limbo. No, no, we were the other way around. Um, the finished script was 51 pages. 51 pages, we had like 55 and we, minutes And we wound up with 63 minutes. Yeah, so at that point, you're not a short film and you're not a feature. You're nothing. You're, you're, you're pretty you're much... You're, caught, you're literally caught within like the five-minute scope of being nothing. <laughs> you so have like, to <laughs> send it to Spain to be a featurette. Like, yeah. Featurettes so, like, are like you're, huge you're, in Spain. You ever, 45 you ever have a featurette? Minutes. Here, no. No. I mean, Not I, here, I, I you won't hear about, about it. it. So we're like, oh, fuck. We, so we couldn't cut anything because we've cut anything. You're cutting You're cutting like organs at that point. You're cutting vital stuff. Right. You already trimmed all the fat. Yeah, we already trimmed all the fat. Like, you got nothing. So I was like, what are we going to do? Like, let's film the flashbacks. Like, so we scraped together like another day of filming. And we're like, let's just film the original flashbacks we had from the original script that we couldn't fit in the one day of filming. So that was that brought us to the feature length. So that was, we did all those flashbacks in one day. Wow. And uh, we got an apartment. Five in, scenes? Five or six scenes. Five yeah. scenes. It's about 12 minutes of film in one day. That's impressive. Oh, shit. So that was, that was in June. So we finished filming in December. We, hadn't, we didn't see footage for four months. So we gave the guy the hard drive with all the footage on it. We're like, all right, like when you get to it, let us know. So we didn't see anything until like April. So we sat in there for four months. We're like, every day, every day. We're like, <laughs> check, check, check me email. Check your email. What's going email on? Email working. <laughs> so we got it. I we, paid my phone we, bill. We, 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 you know, do a string out. String out is just when you piece it together. Each scene, like no, no editing or anything. Just kind of do scene, scene, scene. We're like, right. all right, we're at this time. All right, it was like, we have no choice. We got to film this. So I was like, it's kind of cool though. Kind of, I like the way he really uh, put that, uh, did the the coloring on that. You, you kind of get that '80s feel. Yeah. Like that 80s rock feel, and uh, especially with Doug. <laughs> that was that was cool to work with. And so, then, sorry, Brad. Oh, God. So, you make the film. I mean, you write it, you make it, you get it back, and then you got the finished product, right? And you're obviously, you know, it's being discussed. Mm -hmm. It's out there. People have been seeing it. What? So, what's what's next? What happens now? Like, what? Got to keep writing. I gotta get an agent. <laughs> well, but no, but I mean, with this film, what's oh, oh, with this film, with this film, like what? Where does it go from here? Film festivals. That's the route it's got to take. It's just it's the it's the natural organic route for that to take. Okay. It's just film festivals. It's so getting what? In. What's what? You, what has to happen for that? You just submit and you get in. You submit it and you get hope in. for the best. Yeah. That's so it. we're submitted yeah. for twenty right now. Wow. So we were submitted. We're just waiting to hear back from them. You haven't heard back from any yet. A couple. A couple. Told us no. Yeah. Now. So that was kind of one. We won like a. Uh, we won an honorable mention. It's a pretty <laughs> much a fucking that. participation. Yeah, we, we, we got a which is cool. Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, if I didn't mention it. Just put it in the fucking festival. Yeah. Yeah. So what know. happens? There if was you no don't... actual festival. Like I, I didn't know what it was when I. Uh, I just saw some upcoming fucking thing. Yeah, send, 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 send. Credit card max out. <laughs> send. And uh, <clears throat> it was like a. It's like an online film festival. Yeah, it was like an online film festival. They watch it and. I mean, it's good not everybody, you know, wins an award, so technically we still won something. But, yeah, it's whatever. But, uh... But we're trying to get in, just hearing back from these, like, the big like the big festivals. Like, Tampa and Ashland and all these other ones. There's a couple of really great ones on Long Island. Southampton, Long Island International Film Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the other one? I don't know. I don't Montauk, know. Montauk Film Festival. So what happens if you don't get into these festivals? It was... What's the, the next route? Throw it on Cody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people watch it just, yeah, just, just get it out there just cut it out yeah. there put it on any type of service that we can just people can watch it and just kind of enjoy it and kind of hope we get positive feedback in a way that says hey you know, we like what you're doing let's see if we can do something else okay. I mean obviously we'd have to get it rescored you know there's certain songs in there we can't oh, not rescore you, you have to replace the original music right replace some music with original uh, yeah you know original so, music but where so where can people go now especially people that are going to listen to this where can they go and watch this as of right now, nowhere. Nowhere. Unless it gets in a festival. Once you, there's rules that you abide to when you enter a festival. So if you enter a festival, it's not allowed to be on any type of streaming platform for a public viewing. What the fuck? Yeah. Because yeah. festivals want, ex, what are they called? Exclusive, exclusive right? Exclusive, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exclusive, yeah, they want exclusivity. exclusivity to the festival. So once you enter a festival, it cannot be on the internet for or any public screening. You can't show it to anyone. Wow. Which is, if it was up to me, I'd leak it, but... Yeah. So all right. So so how long? What's the timeline here until you guys can and, actually put it out? Until now? the last festival says usually one until, year. until you respond to the, from the last festival. Okay. So, so how long has it been since you guys got the finished product that you could start doing this? A month and a half, two months. Yeah. Uh, so you we just got it in December. Got it. Oh, okay. It was, okay. It was a yeah. year in post production. So you're at the very start we're at the very of this process. Of this. Yeah. yeah, we'll probably have another showing though uh, in the summertime. 
yeah. that kind of more people want to see uh, it. So those no. you could do. You can do private shows. Yeah, you could do private shows as long as you know you're not selling tickets or you're not. If uh, you're not pro, yeah, it's just you know, no promotion. Anything for online it. is uh, disallowed because it will actually exclude you from the festival. If you get in and they find out like it's online or like on any website, they'll they'll take you out of the festival. Mm -hmm. This feels to me like uh, the NCAA and how they treat yeah. football <laughs> players. Yeah. yeah. They didn't even give me a meal so, plan. So, so no like, meal plan, nothing. So it's like, not even, not even that you're in the festival. If you want to apply to the festival, you can't show up to anyone. That's the That's most, it's not even saying, no, like, okay, you're coming here in 30 days. Please don't show up. Then we, you know, we want to get a good going. You want to apply, wait six months to hear back. Within those six months, you can't show up to anyone. You can't have on any platform. That's ridiculous. Yeah. If you're going to have Jake Gyllenhaal in your festival, I want to be able to put that shit on YouTube. For, for real. And let somebody see it. We should uh, start a Six Bar Podcast film festival. About the domain that right now. Six Bar Film Festival. Podcast.com. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's so, uh, actually, I looked into it. It's actually really fucking expensive to start a film imagine. festival. It's like right. hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's, and nobody's going to, you know, yeah, hey, here, here, take some money, start a festival. You know, do, nah. That's ridiculous, but. Yeah, so, so you're, you're kind of stuck in this about, this 12-month limbo of like, I have this film, I want to show people, but like. I want to, you know, you want to you go, want to screw you want to go the kosher route of going to the film festival. You're not gonna, you're not gonna fuck yourself out of that. Just I've been so, using so. kosher a lot. I was just gonna say that. I don't it's know like why. the third or fourth time. I have pastrami today, so that's why. Because <laughs> I'm feeling very Jewish. Today, so. <laughs> oh, what, what's another word for that? Legit. I don't like saying legit because it's not a real word. Oh, that's legit. Legitimate, um, I guess. Yeah. I guess you you're a writer. You gotta come on. Yeah, come on. Come on. Lots hey. of sources at home. <laughs> so, basically. What I think is that come the summertime, if you're going to do another screening, I'm assuming it's going to be local. Yeah, yeah, probably right. the same place we had it last time. All right, so well, I tried to get you guys on just before that, but the snowstorm yeah, snow snow fucked everything up. Fuck one snow fucking snowstorm this year. Yeah, Bitch. so if you guys decide to do another one, come back and you know this way we can at least pump it up a little bit. Yeah, cool. get yeah. talk about boxing too. Dude, Hell fuck yeah, yeah dude. talk about anything, talk MMA, about whatever. I, dude, I fucking I love boxing. I'm Me not, too. I'm not one of these uh, MMA guys where there's like the MMA. Boxing. Oh, you got to pick one or the other. Yeah, no, I grew up watching boxing. I wouldn't be fighting or interested in MMA if it wasn't for boxing. Yeah, there was no real platform for MMA yeah. back. You know, didn't exist. I'm, I'm assuming yeah. you're around my age. Yeah, I'm 34. All right, so you know, it was you're pretty much watching Foreman. Of course, Whitaker. You know, Leonard. You're watching Pernell's my everybody that Pernell, guy, but Pernell Whitaker is my one of my top five boxers of all time at least at Pernell I'm getting hungry over here. <laughs> <laughs> Pernell Pastrami yeah, yeah close enough <laughs> but um there's you know it's a, it's actually funny that you know you got the the Ali shirt on right now and you walk into I walked in I saw it I was like yeah, oh the, shit the, <laughs> went right over to the boxing area <laughs> you saw that one too right yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. so Mr. Liston on the floor over there right on um, are those uh those autograph glo autograph gloves or just uh? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know the story. Yeah, I'm not sure. Gloves. I was uh, trying to look before, but I didn't want to touch anything. So, yeah, t dude, this is our studio, and I don't want to touch things either. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, so I, th there's no way for anybody to watch this shit. So, for people that are listening and maybe they want to, you know, uh keep tabs if something pops up and they see it they know what to look out for is there any way for people to like you know follow you guys like social yeah. media oh yeah we got a website does it, does, the, does it have a press page whatever like give all that yeah, you don't want to follow me on social media <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, <laughs> you gotta into the valley com. so V-A-L-L-I like the like the name so we post everything on there you got the trailer you got the uh, cast, like, crew, cast crew contact uh, everything for that uh, whatever press and all that okay Instagram lead based pro that's my name uh, I got Into the Valley for the movie. Was it Into the Valley? Right. Uh, yeah. Into At the... Into the Valley. Yep. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then the trailer's on YouTube. We're up to like, yeah. what, uh, a few thousand views, which is kind of cool. We'll, yeah, we'll, something like that. We'll pump that up and uh, and get it linked in the... Uh, yeah. Hole. Just don't follow me. <laughs> you don't want to follow me. <laughs> Unless you, you get, like seeing pictures of dogs. Did you get banned from Facebook like nine times? I did. I get kicked off Facebook Oh, are you that guy? I like to argue. Uh, you're <laughs> that guy. I do. Now, do you like to actually argue, argue, or yeah. like troll, argue? Like, a little bit of both. Okay. A little bit of both. <laughs> as long as you can I, I got to see my troll. audience. Like, if, I, if, you know, I'm starting real, and then they come back with a little troll, then, you know, you got to go full troll. <laughs> but it's boring. You know, I don't want to see pictures of your fucking kid. You know, I want to go over there, I want to argue, and I want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but then people get sensitive, and they start reporting you, and you get all yeah. the fucking... All the snowflakes. Sorry. Jail. 
Sorry, uh, your account has been suspended again. Again, I'm on like seven. <laughs> Pat Bradley the seventh. Yeah, Pat Bradley seven. You know, like, how many kids do you have? No, that's just me. <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> Junior. I gotta start changing my name now. Fucking for me. Oh man. You got a hooker. What's your, what's your hooker name gonna be? Uh, <laughs> Chubbs. 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 <laughs> Them chubby titties. Oh man, I don't know if I'd pick up a hooker named Chubbs. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a fact. Yeah. Right. They usually know how to suck it well, so I mean. <laughs> gotta be good at something. <laughs> they got nice eyes. <laughs> it's a great personality. Yeah. Shiny Just get a sex doll. <laughs> you see the sex dolls? Yeah, those things are. Oh. <laughs> They're ridiculous. It's, it's insane. It's really insane. Like, uh, Did you see the pictures of them? No. Nah. Oh, my God. Can you pull up pictures yeah, of them? Oh, yeah. my God. It's, Nick's got one, man. They, they look like cool. Instagram models. Oh, yeah, they, 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 they really do. It was, what the it's kind of it's creepy, like, it's actually. Like, it's like, you know, uh, real... you look at the Instagram model. You know, doctors are building Instagram models anyway. So you might as well just build a sex doll, right? You got to see these. It's fucking ridiculous. Uh... There was one specific site that like is that the it. one you sent me? Yeah, yeah. I might even still have it on. A, uh, <laughs> I go. got it saved. I might have it in the text thread. Hold on. Yeah, I have it. I got it uh, favorited. Oh no, wait. Real love. No, that's not the one. <laughs> Real love for you. Dot com. <laughs> but now, how do you? I, Maybe it was this one. If you're gonna buy a sex doll, like just get a hooker. Just get a hooker. Stop being lazy. Because you know it's you know what's gonna happen, right? Uh, you're gonna be doing your thing with the sex doll. And then all of a sudden, you got to clean up. There was a once you finish. There was a what, really, you're gonna look at yourself like, what, how do I clean this up? Do I got to take it apart, put attach a hose to the sink, and flush it? Like, there, was, there was a <laughs> meme, there was a meme like that. It was like, um, it was like, yeah. stop saying that uh, sex dolls are gonna replace real women. It's like you can't even be bothered to pick up your laundry, but you're gonna come in something <laughs> and clean it out <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Oh, you got it. <laughs> then you got the fucking... No, it's, it's not... This uh, is not it's sexy, <laughs> it's sexyrealsexdolls.com. What a, what, a, what a name. What a domain name they had to get. Like, sexy, sexy, kitty, lick, lick, dolls.com. Yeah. No, you know, you do your thing, you finish. David from Denver just purchased one. Oh, David. <laughs> you gotta see the one in the I didn't hoodie. know my VPN was through Denver. <laughs> look at this, look at like, this thing. Like, That's a fucking what? sex doll. Looks like a Brooklyn shorty. Yeah, these are crazy. How much are they? Like three thousand dollars. Yeah, they, you got they three thousand dollars to spend on sex dolls. You might as well like go to like do a dating class or something. Like, it's insane. if you can spend day. three three G's on a sex doll, you can afford some hot fucking whore to hire. Yeah. Like, that's just lazy. You get the bargain rate. You get, like, you get the bargain rate. Like, you get you know instead of one for three, you get thirty for a hundred. At least you don't gotta buy her dinner. That's exactly right. You don't have to deal with any Anal of that death. shit. Well, like, and the dinner's death. cheaper, bro. <laughs> and then when she wakes up and kills you, is her fucking AI. Fucking like what, X, 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 yeah. yeah. Good the, fucking move. That fucking, movie, yo, oh, the I dance. love that movie. That movie was so good. But yeah, these things she rips off your crazy. arm. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, like they're they're they're, they're, they're almost too rare. Like what, what is what, like, is what the fuck is this? She's just pregnant? Is she pregnant? No, it's just the torso. L this is cup mini. The it's a midget. It's Ew. A, uh, Ew. Sorry. What the f there's no legs. It's just a vagina <laughs> on her stomach. Her vagina's with a belly button. All right, dude, turn this That's off. That's a real any. This is too much. What the fuck? The American That's Psycho fucking... special. <laughs> Patrick Bateman alone. Holy shit. No, it's like half the price. How do you how are you gonna feel about yourself after you have to clean up? I don't you know, just gonna sit there and it's, look at it. No, it's, like, it's awkward when you're with a real girl and you're like, what do I do? I get a do towel? I gotta just like, get you a what, towel or wipey? What do I do? Baby wipes? Yo, like, now it's. And it never gets any less awkward. No. Doesn't matter how Ever. long you're with yeah, somebody. It, it, yeah. It doesn't matter how long you're with that person. Just like you want looking tell? at them like, uh. It might do. Wow. And then like, Bye. I remember with my, my ex-girlfriend, it would be like, so, do I, oh, do oh. I, do I just throw the towel at you? Is that disrespectful? <laughs> do I wipe it? My girlfriend? Do I wipe him? Is that creepy? Like, what do I do here? So this is a thing. Oh. Uh, this is what Sam would buy. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going for. That made me sad. It's a tranny sex doll. Oh, wait. <laughs> did I misgender? No, it says tranny sex doll. I don't even G -cup. say tranny anymore. G cup tranny sex doll. <laughs> but if the, the site says it. You As Sam it. would say, it's the best of both worlds. Three thousand sale for eight ninety nine. Yeah, get a bargain. Amazon Half Prime. Off. <laughs> Amazon it's used. Prime. <laughs> you get brand new used. That's crazy. Like this now how do you like, resell that? Like, can you can you put your used one on eBay? Market, yo, <laughs> can you put your used one on eBay? Honestly, honestly, there's probably real weird people. I would probably pay more for yeah. a used one. Yeah, but then like, you got to give you got to give your sex. I was looking yeah. for I was looking for a, a a tablet on Craigslist one time, and dude was like, "I'll we'll trade used sex toys for a tablet." I was like, 
used sex what? toys? Huh? You want me to like? Well, it's, there's like a whole oh, market for like used women's panties and shit on that. Concert. I can understand, <laughs> but like used fleshlights. Yeah, somebody sent me this yeah. yesterday. Is it somebody fucking a sex toy? Slightly off? used coat rack. It's a fucking uh, <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey X. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly used coat rack. Oh wow! Where is it? East Islip, I think it is. Bayshore. Bay Shore? Wherever that is. I can pick it up on the way home. Yo, there's, and there, dude, there's a there's a Scripture picture somehow. in the background, like a wedding picture in the background of some dude with a. Wait, boss. that's real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever this guy is, this guy with the Tom Selleck mustache. <laughs> wow, wow, that's incredible. The eBay is ridiculous. Uh, my girlfriend sells a lot on eBay. She put her uh, her shoes, you know, used shoes. Yeah. She had like foot of shoes, so she had to. She can't wear high heels anymore, so she had to put sell all her high heels. So one guy was like, emails her. He's like, can you take pictures of you wearing them? And can you do this and that and that? And then send it to me after you run in them? I was like, uh, like no, no, God. I was like, how no. much is he paying? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, if he's paying, you know, if he's giving you an extra hundred, yeah. throw them on. Yeah. I'll put them on and I'll run. <laughs> go, 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 go run a mile. And then we'll be all right. You know, you sell 10 pairs. Yeah. You know? if, if it's enough to pay rent, I mean, you know, but you got to do what you got to do. They, got, they send her some weird requests. I can imagine. There's some fucking Just real strange people. Yeah, there's some strange people out there. Anyway. One guy yeah. wanted uh, to buy skirts from her, and he's like, are they skirts or squirts? What? Squirts. You don't that? wear skirts? It's, it's, it's a skirt, but it's <laughs> It's a shorts. skirt with, like, shorts underneath. Uh, like, you know, like, yeah. okay. private so you, school girl. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, yeah, like I'm a, a no shot. panties kind of guy, so no, I don't wear so skirts. So it's, uh... Yeah. Commando. How you doing? <laughs> you gotta take them off. You just gotta pull them to the side. They they literally like will give you extra money to model it for us, send us pictures, and then wear them. <sighs> There's a business. Whatever. Yeah, if, they, if they're gonna pay, I mean, whatever. But it's it fucking. You should make a film about that. So, should. I'm sure there has been some. I think our next oh, one's gonna sure. be about a bunch of guys that can't get into a film festival, so they start <laughs> killing people around them to make a film about that, so they can get into a legit film you festival. You honestly should do that. That sounds like some shit, like uh, yeah. some super troopers type shit. You should do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be it'll be cheap to license too because we can just license into the valley and incorporate it into the film so you own it already. You like <laughs> just go full circle with the fucking thing. Might and they put my mugshot at the end. You just troll the whole industry. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah, you could. I'm sure you probably get into a film festival. Yeah. Make, it. make it real art to get a crane shot from up above. <laughs> get reflect the it off my bald ass head. Just like, wow, it's a reflection shot. It's nice. <laughs> well, overall, especially now getting the whole picture. With what you guys had to do and how you did it, <laughs> fucking home run. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Honestly, it was thank well you. done. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. You know, obviously things could be better, but they could always be better. Uh, everything could be better. Considering, you know, sitting down with you guys and hearing the whole story in the process, I'm that much more impressed. Honestly, cool. I think, thank you. I think, you know, obviously I'm not an expert, but um, obviously, <laughs> fuck you. Um, I would. Love to see what you guys could do with a real budget. So would I. Yeah, that'd be really cool. So, I would love to see yeah, that's, more that's than the nine goal, days. Man. More than nine days. <laughs> yeah. Like two weeks. Not, I mean, if we if we could have doubled what we put in, uh, it would have been you yeah. know it was, good, it was good as it is and like because I mean nine the... nine days thirty five thousand dollars is you know, for a movie yeah. is that's like Johnny Depp's like yeah. Cheez Its budget <laughs> yeah. for like fucking Pirates <laughs> of the Caribbean. Johnny Depp spends thirty five grand on fucking Cheez Its and Red Bull for Pirates <laughs> of the Caribbean. <laughs> And I'm crying over two dollars for a Red Bull. Yeah, yo, we would go, we would go on lunch runs and be like, Nick, you want anything? Like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I pretty <laughs> save, much just wouldn't eat. Save the six save bucks. Some water. <laughs> I I got home and ate. Yeah, like it was nothing like that. <laughs> yeah, you got people asking for fucking egg whites and bean sprouts. Like, like no. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna have a couple. You could have water. a cracker. I'm gonna have That's a cup it. of water. I'll Here's watch you guys share. eat. Very salty. I'm gonna <laughs> lick some of this yeah. shit off my boot. <laughs> <laughs> salty. <laughs> well. Yeah, it's, Thank you, man. Yeah, no, Appreciate thank you guys that. for coming, you know. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. Um, any, anybody guys you want to give some shout-outs to? Big shout-out to uh, uh, the crew. Chris Lynn, Justin, Mike, uh, Kyle. They were just awesome to work with. They really – everyone always <coughs> thanks the cast. You can always thank the cast because that's what you see in front of the camera, but behind the camera, it's – without them, it's got yeah, nothing going on. That crew made the film. Yeah, that crew was insane to work with. They were just so professional and, like, they knew knew everything. Right Big shout out to them. Chris pretty much directed the film. Yeah, <laughs> to Chris be honest, Lynn, he Chris Lynn was best of cinematography. cinematography. Yeah, he, yeah. you know, it, it was our first rodeo. Yeah, he's been, you know, he's been riding bull since you know he's like forever. five. Yeah, and he's like 
a quarter of my age. <laughs> wow. He's like 24, 23. He's like my wow. age. He's like Nick's age. He's a little wow. older than me. Yeah, but whatever. But um, yeah, he's he like, was. He's like, no, nah, nah, I, I got this. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm like, Cause I like, I was like, I should have do it. Like, I got this. Go sit down. And like, <laughs> right. fucking just like oh. ringing people up. And he's like, let's go. And he knew how to talk to people. Right. Yeah. Like definitely. he knew how to make the actors feel, you know, like he wasn't talking down to them. Right. Like where me you'd work with again? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I'd absolutely. Him, I'd work with him in a heartbeat. Like, do you have plans on it? You, you plan on trying to work with him again? Or? But I can't afford him. <laughs> yeah, he's. <laughs> I know. Uh, I can't even afford you know. Can't Movie kind yourself. of t- yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Car pulled here. <laughs> Flat drive. I, I don't blame you. But. Yeah, two hours is nuts. Yeah. But it's fucking traffic. Yeah, it's fucking worse. So here's what we'll do on the next one, guys. When when you're gonna do the um, get the premiere up stuff, to the mic. When you do the premiere and stuff, closer. We're gonna um, fillet go. the mic. <laughs> well, we'll we'll have you guys out here on a weekend. Cool. Yeah, that's we'll good. Do a weekend one. That's a little bit more um, cool. Works better for you guys. Because I definitely wanna. Um, keep tabs on on how you guys do with this, cause yeah, you guys can come to the next. Uh, I was gonna come to the original it. one, but yeah, five years from now you guys go to the next. But you didn't want, want to come. It's all right. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck that. I'm not watching something on the big screen. <laughs> I'm not driving all the way out. I'm not paying for popcorn. Eat, eat, yeah, but it was a free ticket. <laughs> if I had somebody, I could do the popcorn trick too. Maybe, but no, nah, I wasn't in the room. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> but. When you do the next one, if you guys are gonna give me a hand job, I'm in. That's it. You don't want my I got fucking I got calluses. Callus yeah, nah, right. What's your day rate? <laughs> Depends on how good the service is. Check my Yelp. If you give me that Mary Ann service, <laughs> <laughs> if I get that Mary Ann service, I got four stars on Yelp. I might, I might pay a pretty penny for that. Uh, he's, he's just trying to get another movie made, man. Yeah, so. whatever, man. Whatever it takes. Well, this is not gonna be the kind of movie you I want. Got, I got a carpal tunnel. <laughs> Writing those four pages a night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. my hands. I got a little mouth. Up. Nobody wants me. Small butt, little mouth. No way. I'm not, you know, high on the market. You're like you're you're the on sale sex doll for six. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> Free shipping. <laughs> got man tits. You know, it's fucking. Somebody out there loves that. They do. Well, listen. Thank you again thank for coming. Thank you for having man. us. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you it. Know. Thanks, man. Uh, I'll shake hands in a second. Uh, after. After I stop, after I stop, I gotta. St- I, I wish I could tell people to go watch this, but you can yeah. tell them to go watch it. Go, you know, go watch the trailer. Go least. watch the trailer. Yeah. And, uh, check out the trailer. And give give these guys some feedback on something. You know, if you watch the trailer, you, you put a line in on the Instagram, whatever. Just, yeah, shoot uh, us an email. You can come over and watch the movie at my house. So. You, go, you get a hand. Yeah. You cannot yeah. come to my house. You cannot. We have a projector. We got, yeah, we got a projector. The house. Come over to our house. Get a hand job. Meet the cast and crew. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're not gonna want to give hand jobs. They're you know they're real talent. <laughs>